We'll see what happens. We'll see. All right. So, hey there, everybody. This is Bro. Oh, I was waiting for a this and, is Murph. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm Murph. I'm the Resident Evil boy. Do, do I usually introduce you? Is that why that was difficult? Uh, no, I, I, <laughs> I forgot you said we're not using Audacity. So when you just started, I was like, oh, no, I haven't clicked record. <laughs> Oh God! All right, good start, everybody. We're we're ranking in the Day Dreamcast special because we have a we have a podcast for video games, uh, in which you know we play video games, and Murph has gone through all of the Resident Evils. So now yes. we're gonna rank them. Yes, this is this is all of the Resident Evil games, the spinoffs, uh, the canon CG movies, and a, f- a few. A few little bonuses, Resident Evil adjacent. It was either uh, it was either ranking Resident Evils or doing Smash or Pass for Pokemon. I elected to do Resident Evil. So yeah, you're we'll welcome. Be doing, we'll be doing Smash and or Pass on the Resident Evil creatures. Oh, okay, yeah, I can do that. Uh, the only the, what's missing from this list, uh, probably noticeably, is the Paul W S Anderson movies. You uh, saw the first one, right? Well, yes, I, I didn't finish it. Why didn't you finish the masterpiece? Uh, something came up at the time. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, that's it was fair. kind of just like a lazy Saturday pick, and since I didn't commit, I didn't commit to watching the rest. No, I get it. No, no, that uh, that makes sense. Also, various Resident Evil phone games are not present here. Okay. I mean, how like are the phone games that different? No, but there's some like like. Like not like even smartphone era, like BlackBerry era. Ooh, games. but I kind of like that. We should do a BlackBerry phone. Honestly, the best game, top ten games of all time, is the Motorola Snake game. I well, I Nokia Snake. <laughs> or yeah, Nokia sure. Snake. My bad. You're right. Nokia Snake is like god tier shit. Anyways, we're not we're not ranking Snake. We are. Do you want to do in release order or in the... We should do release order, right? Yeah, I think release order, even though these boxes... These are, are clearly not, not in order, but... No, I, I don't know what order that roughly is. Roughly, we'll figure it out. You'll you'll have to hunt and peck. So yeah, let's go in release order that way. Um, Everything's so clean. A, yeah, so this is mostly going to be Murph opinion. Um you know, playing the shotgunning these games and movies back to back. Uh but Bro is free to sway me. He is free to chime I, in. I am I am the chorus that is trying to say whether or not he's right or wrong. He's the judge. But I am he's the, the jury, judge. I guess. I don't know the what that maybe not. Surrogate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll okay. see. So Resident Evil One, did you end up like especially after all of the games, how do you feel about Resident Evil One now? Uh, Resident Evil 1 is A tier. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I'd agree with that. I think it is a exceptionally strong start to the franchise. And really um, holds up on its own within, like, the breadth of the franchise. Um, you were you were there at the start. I you, you can speak to how resistant I was to playing the original PS1 games. I wanted. I, mean, I was like a literally vouching for them. I was like, because yeah. you were because you were originally gonna be like, no, I'm think I'm just gonna play the remake. I'm like, yo, you should you should do them all. <laughs> yeah, and that's what and I was like. Well, all right, fucker, I will play them all. <laughs> um, yeah, I was so hesitant to play this because all I really hear about the PS1 games is that oh, they were good for the time, but they're real clunky now. But you know what? I really got into the gameplay of Resident Evil 1. Um, like, everything that I thought I would hate, like the tank controls, I, well, okay, tank controls I never really gelled with. I learned to live with them. But, like, the fixed camera angles, the inventory management, that's all really fun, and you understand how it applies to, like, the game feel. I don't even mind the doors. I, yeah. The doors are great. Like, that's you taking a breath. That's like your moment to collect yourself and assess the situation. And there's also a little bit of suspense. It is like the slow creak that goes in. Yeah. It's, it's immersive because it's also like first person in that and moment. Every, yeah. 
And every time there's like a new door animation, you're like, ooh. Oh, um, yeah. I think the mansion environment is probably one of the best locations in the franchise. I was going to say, like, the thing about Resident Evil 1 that, like, especially in the trilogy, because, like, ultimately when I think of Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3, I think of them in the trilogy. And then, like, none of the others compare in, like, a weird museum way to me. I don't know. But what what really is nice about the first one is, like, it, it has, like, a weird focused experience that just feels so essential and pure in a way that the other two, especially two, because two feels like a conflict of like a conflict of emotions with the police department. Um, but like the mansion is just spooky, scary, and it's just it just works perfectly. Yeah, the haunted house environment really is what bolsters this. Um, and like you always know where to to go in the mansion like if you know where the room you need to get to is and the room where you are you know the a to b to c to get there it's just this great interconnecting little hub and then it like there's i wasn't expecting to go beyond the mansion like there's the whole bit with the gardens and then the um the guard house where you have to like fight plant 42 and below that with the shark tank that's all like real great it keeps surprising you Mm mm-hmm yeah, like the pacing is the pacing is like shocking, especially when you're going into it the first time. Um, yeah, no, it's it's crazy, and then it goes into the lab stuff, and then the lab stuff I'm I'm a little less keen on, but it still works. And it like yeah. I like I I do actively like. Can I say something? I think uh, Resident Evil One Wesker is my favorite Wesker. Yes, correct. You are a hundred percent correct. He is. He that is like the one time where it was like there's no like there is an irony to the the appreciation, but like there's pure appreciation there. I love the twist. Yeah. I love all of it. He's he's perfect here. Yeah, Wesker only gets worse as the fran. He gets worse in every appearance. <laughs> yeah, after. basically. Um, let me and like the fact that there's multiple endings and paths, like the story can play out completely differently. Like if you're playing Jill and you have that betrayal with Barry, like depending on how you interacted with Barry, he may not come back to save you from Wesker. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and like and, Rebecca yeah. can die if you're playing as Chris. That's like so cool. Yeah, I agree. No, that stuff's that stuff's awesome. And like you, you did you did you you saw the cutscenes right to both of them. I I do yeah. like the profoundly like. I like how the this is codified into difficulty, whereas the other games will do uh, different characters in sort of like a, it's a slightly different flavor. It's a different game, wink, wink. And it's like, no, this one is much more like, how do you like your difficulty? Do you like being able to yeah. open more doors and have more item slots, but take yeah. less or like take less easier damage before you die? Expla- ex- easier exploration versus easier combat. Yes. Yeah, and and like that's how, that is like a really good way to actually balance the player's enjoyment. Yeah. So yeah, Resident Evil One just solid A tier. Um, I think the only reason that it's not S is it does have that sort of weak ending. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I think I, the lab section does. It does feel like that's where it starts to spin its wheels a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If only. If only somewhere down the line they made something that improved all of that. We'll 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 talk about it when it gets there. I I that uh, one may okay. Let's go into Resident Evil Two. I think Resident this one is the one I'm going to be fighting for. Mm, yeah, because you you know that I'm not. You know when I finished Resident Evil Two the first time, I did like place it above, um, one. Uh, Resident Evil Two's there below Remake Three if you can see it on the right side. Mm oh goodness oh i see it yeah. this one um i'm yeah. guess. Uh, can i guess what you were gonna rank it you're gonna I'm rank gonna it, it in b. b yeah um so, yeah i think resident evil 2 is sort of the reverse like resident evil not like like resident evil the franchise it has uh, to me it has a weak start and a strong finish okay whereas a lot of the games are reversed uh, okay so let me let me argue for putting re2 in a let me let me do this real quick because this is probably my favorite classic resident evil 
um you know how i like try to like explain like understand the formula and the pacing of a standard resident evil in terms of getting scared getting overwhelmed feeling isolated and then eventually growing into a power fantasy to me that power fantasy never gets as like to me that progression and pacing never is as smooth as resident evil 2 it like with hideki kamiya as director it it easily transitions in, in like the most graceful way for me personally, at least in these classic titles, from horror, like the standard stuff, into uh, action. Where it's just like, you're just slaying monsters and you don't give a fuck. I think, I do agree with that. That's what I mean by it has a strong ending. But um, I think that Resident Evil 3 does it so much better. Um, like, playing 3 is the reason why uh, a, a 2 has dropped down to B, and why 1 has ascended to A, because now 2 just started feeling like growing pains to 3, in my mind. And to me, it's just like, 2, I think, has a really weird balancing from the gameplay perspective. In Resident Evil 1 how ammo pickups generally work is you'd find like quite a few of them, but you'd only be picking up like three or four bullets per pickup. Yeah. But you'd be finding them like fairly constantly. Whereas Resident Evil 2 is there are scarcer ammo pickups, but when you do find them, it's like 10 bullets. It's sometimes 15 bullets. It's, it's a, it's a I, much more. Yeah, I get it. And I think I prefer the much more like, common but smaller pickups because there were vast stretches of two where i had no ammo i had no heals which is just not fun i didn't feel like i had wasted ammo because this game loves like saying like the only way forward is to go into this room with five zombies and if you you know at right at the start of the game you only have like maybe 10 bullets to begin with if those zombies don't go down you know then yeah. you're kind of stuck and have to take those hits. That's fair. That's fair. Um, um, for me also, personally, you could you probably like three in terms of how the alternate pathing works. I like how two does... I like how two does the Claire Leon stuff, personally. I think that's really satisfying. I, I especially yeah. like the B scenario. I think the B scenario to Resident Evil 2 is really fun. Yeah, I think um, I, I was, like, you know, after talking shit on the game, I do want to pump it up. Um, I think that 2 is the best implementation of this sort of two-character uh, storylines that they try to go do going forward. Like, the A storyline and the B storyline are completely different depending on who you're playing as. And there's choices you can make in the A storyline that affect the B storyline, and that's, that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, I think it adds good replay to it, the issue is is that there's just the B storyline doesn't feel different enough like gameplay wise to the A storyline. You're I still get that. unlocking the same doors, you're still fighting a lot of the same bosses. Like really uh, the only like primary difference other than the fact that you haven't played Cr or Leon or uh Claire before is ultimately Mr. X probably. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. versus and, the, yeah. And the Mr. X, like, the, the final confrontation with Mr. X is probably one of the best boss fights mm -hmm. in the series, mainly because of that music that plays with, like, that chorus that comes in. That's, like, the most memorable track in, like, scene in the entire game, mm -hmm. in the entire franchise. That's all great. I think it's just, I think it really comes down to I'm not a fan of the police station compared to any of the other environments. It's not, like tricky or surprising like resident evil one's mansion and it's not like breathtakingly tragic like resident evil 3 city um you're i i'm wondering if we should just straight up transition to resident evil 3 or not i i don't know whether or not to make a defense for the police station you know what i don't know how long this is gonna run we're gonna put it in B. I might resurrect the Resident Evil okay. Two argument. I did. I did crunch the numbers. The only way this video is coming in under two hours is if we only spend four minutes a game. Oh no! Well, <laughs> some of these we won't talk about for more than four minutes. Yeah. Okay. So, Resident Evil Three. Yes. Uh, Resident Evil Three is A tier, 
I put it above. Um, yeah, we're do we're doing these in below. order, right? Like I am. Yeah. Um. You know what? I'd actually put three below one. I agree. I don't like three. Three is my least favorite. I I don't want to like make full on judgments on it. Um. I actually think it is really nicely like focused, especially in terms of the environment and. I think it does a nice blend of action and horror. It's just way more consistent throughout for me. So Yeah, I think um the rapid pace of three where there's no there's no conspiracy to uncover. It's just get the F out of Raccoon City and mm -hmm. then like distractions pop up. Um really helps. It feels like the game is playing out in real time as you're doing it. So like every moment and there's, it's not like there actually is a timer or anything, but every moment you're just sitting there screwing around with your inventory, you feel like the clock, like an imaginary clock is running out. Yeah. And that's just all the result of its presentation. Like these pre-rendered backgrounds are gorgeous. And the sound design where you can just hear distant screams and sirens and gunshots, that's all like, that's just great atmosphere to me. And I think it has like the most natural feeling puzzles of this era mm -hmm. where you're not doing like weird moon logic crap. You know, it's like, you need to power this door. Go take a car battery from this parking garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's way more fire. standard stuff instead of the, secretly, the architect of this building has devised a yeah. weird mythology. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. And, um, yeah, and it still has those scarce ammo pickups like two, but three offsets this with the ammo crafting, which yeah. is such a great, like, addition. So now it's not like, you're scrounging for bullets, you're scrounging for gunpowder, and you're constantly thinking of, like, okay, I have this, these types of gunpowder, but if I hold out, I might find a diff, like, a gunpowder B and make shotgun shells. And the shotgun's really powerful in this game. And, and it really it's speaks to the immediacy to where the diff, the, uh, sort of, uh, replay value comes in alternate paths rather than, um, rather than actually, like, here's an entirely B, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, yeah. It's a much, and that aids in the immediacy to it. Yeah, and I think three just has a real strong cathartic like ending with Nemesis. Yeah, like uh, uh Nemesis here blows most of the other pursuer enemies out of the water, even remake Nemesis, mm -hmm. which is why that remake isn't is like kind of disappointing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know that final moment where you think you've beaten him, and then he fuses with a Mister X and becomes this horrible blob monster, where you almost feel kind of sad for him. Like, in but a would way, you like, smash or pass? Um, OG Nemesis, <laughs> probably not. He seems like a selfish lover. That's fair. That's fair. Continue. Yeah. No, that's it. I just like um three. <laughs> Three was the one that surprised me the most because I don't hear people talk like praise three in comparison to one and two as much. Oh, okay. Here's here's the one other thing I'll say. We'll 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 this, this, it's worth taking the time for the trilogy. We need to take this extended time. Sure, sure. Um, this is where everything like falls into place. Th this is what on. matters, right? This is the if we get this wrong, this is the foundation. Okay, story. I like what I like about Resident Evil Three is the player's relationship with Jill. Mm. Um, I think Resident Evil 1, in terms of a story, is very much B-movie in a pure way that I can appreciate no matter what. But for 2 and 3, I relate way more and I enjoy way more of the characters. 2 may be my favorite Leon. Uh, Yeah, I would agree with that. I think OG Leon... Um. Actually, you know, it's surprising. A lot of the original incarnations of these characters do beat their later, like, appearances. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe it's just because those later appearances want to embrace stuff. But, like, two, for instance, I, I guess my only real defense of the police department is it really does feel like an appropriate diehard. Where, like, Leon is an appropriate John McClane, like, oh, this is my first day on the job. I'm really yeah. fucked now. Like, that mm -hmm. all works. The Ada intrigue introduces that Resident Evil mystique, but is properly, like, coded. And, like, the Sherry stuff is also engaging because you're vulnerable as a kid. Like, all that stuff really works. And then, obviously, 3 has that rapport. You have a relationship with Nemesis, where, yeah. where there's an actual antagonist to be scared of. Mm -hmm. so, 
So, like, I all yeah. of these games, I like the stories. Three has a really good story as well. That I just wanted to say those. That's it. We can move on. Does Dino Crisis happen next? Yes, Dino. I was just double checking that. Uh, it is Dino Crisis. Dino uh, Crisis is gonna I, go. Dino Crisis. I haven't had much time to think about. <laughs> I think it is a high D. A high D, low C. Like. If if a Dino Crisis fan came to me and cried and was like, "DD cast, yeah. please put it in C," I would do it. We're not the CC cast. We're not the CC cast. We're the DD cast. Uh, so yeah, it goes I there. mean, we did a whole we did a whole episode on this. Like, I don't have much to say other than it. It starts like kind of fun and intriguing with the dinosaurs, but it it it, it has difficulty getting you to engage with the gameplay and mechanics. Uh, yeah, and like we just talked about story, and we talked about puzzles, and like all this shit. Dino Crisis flounders. Like, there's one in the trilogy. Every aspect of Dino Crisis is done better in the trilogy at some point or in time. Yeah, you know okay. that's that's my take. That was under four minutes, Murph. Yeah, next one is a uh, Gun Survivor. Uh, it's right there next to Zero, and like between Zero and Revelations under six. Bottom um, row. I see it. Gun Survivor. Uh, this is F tier. <laughs> okay. All right. This is the light gun game, right? Uh, yeah. One one of several. The immediate drop in quality. Okay. Like you come off three, you're having a great time. You're in ecstasy. You got to go to play fucking Gun Survivor. Um, this game, I would, I almost was gonna put in D tier for like a so bad it's good quality. But, like, the final boss is a pain-in-the-ass slog. Um, and the part that makes it so bad it's good is the cutscenes, which you can just watch on YouTube. Yeah. Um, this game has, like, four voice actors, and they all sound like they're recorded in separate warehouses. There's randomly British orphans. Uh, the main character has amnesia and immediately assumes he's, like, the first name that someone calls him. <laughs> apropos of nothing. Okay. <laughs> Um, and the, it, it's, oh my god, it's so stupid. And then it's like, he's like finding all these, uh, like, newspaper clippings and reports about the guy who he thinks he is, who's like kidnapping children and beating people with table legs and crap. Oh my god. He's like, oh man, I'm a real asshole. And then it just takes, like, one of the British orphans to be like, no, you're not the asshole, you're the good guy. And he's like, oh. I remember now. I'm, I'm <laughs> Oh no! My my best friend Leon Kennedy sent me here to stop Umbrella. Oh no! It's like Leon, you really know how to pick them. I love um, I love at the end of Resident Evil Two that we're gonna stop Umbrella, and then I guess this is what happened, right? Uh, yeah, he's like a reporter or some shit. Uh, the gameplay is also terrible. It's not really a light gun so much as it is like a. Well, I was going to say an early FPS, but Doom has already, already existed. Um, you're basically walking around in a first-person perspective, and it's not even like... It's the same Resident Evil 2 engine, so it's not even like adjusted for this camera angle. Oh, God. And you can hold R2 to bring up a reticle that you can then move around and fire. Here's the thing, though. Your pistol has unlimited ammo. There's no Enemies don't like drop anything. There's no puzzles to do. So there's actually no reason to shoot anything. You can just run past... Wow. All the enemies except the boss. That sounds terrible. Um, yeah, it's just and the music's terrible. There's like the lab theme for this. Sounds like you threw a Casio keyboard down a flight of stairs. Damn. The that is a condemnation from Ner Murph. Um, yeah, so Gun Survivor, don't don't bother. Just is that gonna be the worst or is there worse than this? No, no, there's worse things. Okay. All right. right. There are far worse things. How do wait uh, so this is important. We're gonna rename the Z tier. How do you want to name the F, the Ultra F tier? Um The Steve tier. Okay, all right, I see where this is going. Okay, continue. Uh so next up we have uh Code Veronica. Uh blah, 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 blah. Code Veronica. I see it. I see it. We're good. It, okay. Uh, Code Veronica is C tier. Okay. Yeah, I can um, see that. Code Veronica, I was really looking forward to because I heard it was kind of like the the odd black sheep of the series, and those are the ones I tend to gravitate to. And not just that, it's weird how pivotal it is. 
like, it is. This is this is the turning point of the franchise. Like anyone that says like Resident Evil got weird and actiony with four are didn't did never played Code Veronica because it was on the Dreamcast. Yeah. Don't. Um, like I so badly want to like this game, but it's just so weirdly constructed. Um, the save areas are in these just really out of the way locations, and these maps are fairly large and not all that interconnected. Yeah. So every time you want to save or assess your inventory, you got to backtrack through all these um places, and you know because it's a Resident Evil game, sometimes you may not have killed the enemies in those locations. So it's like always a gamble going back, and not in like a fun way. Um, and it just has these odd. The puzzles are so strange. Like I was praising Resident Evil Three for these natural feeling puzzles. Code Veronica has these puzzles, like get a prop sword to stab in an Iron Maiden, which will open, unveiling a roll of sheet music that you take to a casino and put in the piano. That's the adventure piano game will, logic. The piano will play a song, which will cause one of the slot machines to open, revealing a sapphire ant statue that you put into a, a gramophone that will reveal a golden disc that you put on a separate gramophone that will reveal a trap door up to a magic carousel. You just described the Sierra game. I don't remember yeah. which one, but... You know. um, yeah, it's like it's so confusing and there's this really stupid puzzle involving a fire extinguisher where at the start of the game you get a fire extinguisher and then immediately use it up and just kind of you you get the option to just toss it aside but if you choose to toss it aside and abandon it you'll get to a point where there's like a point of no return and you go to a completely different area where you have one of the first things you have to do is put out a fire but you don't have the fire extinguisher did you do that did you did you make the flub no Okay. No, I went back for the fire extinguisher because I was like, there's no way that you just have to abandon this thing. <laughs> it has um, to be valuable. Yeah. How, do you, how do you feel about the, like, whenever it switches between the two characters? When it switches from Claire to uh, yes, Chris. Chris? This yeah. is the only time I was excited to see Chris. That makes sense. That like, makes sense. This, th this may be the exception to the rule. Yeah. The issue is, is that Chris, the first section of Chris is, like, recycled Claire content from, like, the first half of the game. Yeah. Which is strange because, like, it, it starts on, like, this umbrella prison island. And then Claire and Steve Burnside uh, flee because it's, like, the island is going to self-destruct. They're like, okay, the island's about to go. We need to get out of here. And then Chris shows up, and the island is, like, a little damaged. Like, there's a little, like, some, some hallways are collapsed, but, and he even encounters, like, human NPCs that Claire met, and they're okay. So it's just, it's just odd. Um, this is where they bring back Wesker, and he's got his superpowers, and that's, like, you know, actually intriguing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're only, we're only one step down in the Wesker degradation. It feels creative at this point. Even though yeah. it's totally like a Matrix thing, you know what I mean. But uh, you know, I will say like I would compare I would compare this aesthetic to Devil May Cry. It, you know, um, I don't I don't know how much you know about this, but like obviously around this time, Devil May Cry was sort of because Resident Evil Four was short, started as Devil May Cry. Or, you know what I mean? Like there's there's yeah. an intertwined history. I think a lot of the uh, set decoration and design is reflected in that. So part of me does really like some of the environment in Code Veronica. Yeah, yeah. Code Veronica is aided. The, the, like, the main reason why it's in C tier is it has, like, this great, twisted, strange story. Like, these a like the Ashford twins feel like actual good antagonists. Whereas previously, like, the antagonist was sort of the nebulous Umbrella Corporation and Nikolai in 3. Here, it's like, you know, strange, incestual aristocrats who have this, like, legacy of founding Umbrella and, and shit. Like, that's all weird and fun. And, um, like, the John Woo-inspired cutscenes where you have, like, Steve Burnside crashing through a window, dual-wielding golden <laughs> Lugers. Yeah. Like, that's just, that's just fun. That's fun shit. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, Code Veronica, it, it's a C tier. It has these strange difficulty bumps. Like, it's not fun to play. Speaking of not fun to play, are we doing Zero yet? Or what's the next one? No, Gaiden. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I didn't play uh, this Gaiden, one. I've heard a lot yeah. of goofy shit about this, though. 
Gaiden is uh, C tier behind Code Veronica. Okay, that makes sense. So this is a Game Boy Color Resident Evil game. Okay. Um, it's not canon, unfortunately. Um, this one's just kind of fun and inventive, but it's hindered by the platform it's on. Yeah, that um, makes sense. Did you know so, they were able to put a Resident Evil 1 port on Game Boy? You, They could do yeah. a lot with Resident Evil 1. I saw this. Like, yeah, the GBA like attempted port. That That's cool. Yeah, it, that shit's crazy. How, having to play that on a screen that small seems uh, bothersome. Yeah. Um, um, but so, Gaiden, tell me about Gaiden. So Gaiden is... Um, the gameplay is real interesting. So it has this top-down, like, sort of Zelda JRPG, like, look where you're walking around, and then anytime like, a zombie on the overworld attacks you, it goes to this sort of first-person screen where shooting the zombie is a rhythm game, um, sort of like like the Mario Golf games, you know, where you have, like, that that bar and you want to hit that sweet spot. I know exactly what you're talking about. But every time you, you hit A um, in that sweet spot, you'll shoot the zombie. Um, yes. And as the zombie gets closer, that sweet spot gets bigger. So it's like this sort of game of like do i let it get close enough to hit me so i have an easier time hitting it and then this gets compounded when there's multiple zombies each one having their own spot to shoot on yeah and then you get multiple characters because you start as barry burton and then you get leon and then you get this uh little psychic toddler i forget her name mm -hmm. but each one can have their own guns to fire it that's just like a real it's it's a real neat uh combat and i'd like to see like a modern indie game do more with it yeah um the issues with the game is that it's got only one enemy type just basic ass zombies and okay. the zombie sprites are very good there's only one boss uh which i believe is the first instance in the franchise of them using the term bow oh wow big lore drop um yeah. how long is the game i beat it maybe in like four hours and wow. the main reason for that is um, there's a lot of padding with just, like, finding locations to and, like, unlocking doors, like, getting keys. There's a lot of yeah. key chasing. And when you pick up a key, it will say, like, this is the key to the north kitchen. But it doesn't tell you where that is. And no have, map? Like, no map. Um, okay. Pablo suggested that maybe the manual had a map, but I can't find a PDF of the manual to confirm Yeah, that. we don't know. <laughs> Let's not, you um, know. Yeah, so it's just, eh, it, it, it's just like a lot of milling about and like trying to find where to go the entire time you're listening to this single looping track. But there's um, something to be said for ambition and uniqueness. Yeah, and that's why it's in C tier. And the like, the story is not skimped on. Um, it's like this story of like Barry and Leon. The BOW is this like the thing sort of. A uh, creature where it can turn into other people and the only way to tell is that it has green blood so there's moments where where barry's been replaced where leon's been replaced where the little psychic girl has been replaced um there's a part where like barry calls in an umbrella sub to pick them up from this cruise ship and you're like oh my god barry's been replaced or he's tr betraying them all again and it's like no he was he was uh calling in the sub so that's their escape route and he like takes out all the umbrella officers with his magnum it's like a cool moment mm -hmm. um and then it ends on this ambiguous ending where it looks like Leon has been replaced by the creature. Wow. And the the writer intended that to be canon. That's <laughs> <laughs> so fucking stupid. But it wasn't. And um, this is also the first instance of a BSAA or BSAA-like organization. The, the it opened... major lore developments. Yeah. Like, this game doesn't... The, the Resident Evil is a very interesting franchise because even when it has a bad entry, it never forgets the interesting parts of that entry. It always is recycling. Well, I mean, I think that's important to like learn and then like take the good from the bad, especially in canon, but like just in general. Yeah. And like, you know, this notion of Barry teaming up with a psychic child, that's something we'll see again. A Resident Evil game set on a cruise ship, we'll see that again. You know, it's... I think there's like weird germinations of ideas in this game okay so um, what's next remake one yo i we know what we're doing yeah that's <laughs> going in s tier um this is easily one of the best games i have ever played um just 
so well tightly constructed like ooh, and the way it fucks with you if you've played the first game like you go down that hallway where the dogs are supposed to appear and all that happens is the window breaks that's good and, like the, cri the crimson heads that's such a fun like change to the formula like the first time you take down a zombie i was like oh the, the body doesn't go away okay the and you find those notes saying like oh uh, burn all the bodies and i'm like uh <laughs> oh this is the game this is the game that like whenever we get whenever there's remake discourse regarding like how you should approach a remake this is like my crown jewel of both being very accurate to the feel of the original but also not being so sl devoted to the original's drawbacks and instead yeah. elaborating innovating and adding to in a in a very satisfying way yeah, like every change they've made from the original is a change for the better. The change to uh, the fight with the Neptune, where you're in the shark tank, and that's just, that's fun. The lab with the bomb on your back, that's fun. It's just like all so good. And because it's like also like super short, as soon as I was done, I immediately wanted to jump back in and play as, I played as Chris this time. I wanted to play as Jill, which I did. And I finished in a real quick time too, because, you know, it's, it's a game that teaches you the layout, and it, uh, yeah, it's just it's it's a great game. Go like this is re remake one is the only game I on this list. I will beg people to go play like right now. Yeah, that makes sense. No, like that, that that's Kino. Yeah, yeah, I get it. So this is like I, I'm gonna come out right and say it. Remake one is the best game in the franchise. I would agree. I I I I, I literally like looking at them, even like with my favorites. I, I can't argue against Resident Evil Remake. Like, that's yeah. that's the museum one in 2,000 years when all the other Resident Evil titles have been <laughs> yeah. tossed aside. You know, that will reign supreme. Yes. Yeah. So, going from um, <laughs> yeah. S tier, we're going to have our first Steve tier. No, no, no. Oh, which one is it? Gun Survivor 2, Code Veronica. <laughs> Right there next to Village. It's like the the mummy face. Oh, Above looking. five. You you're right there. Um that's yeah, that's They so made weird. a second one. Yeah. Uh so Why'd they do one. that? This is not um there's a this is a light gun adaptation of Code Veronica. Only again, it's not a light gun game. Uh, because the PS2 port is just like an FPS, but there's no, there's no. The PS2 is, had light gun accessories. Yes, yes, but what happens with this game is it will like say level like mission one, find the key, and it will show you a map where like the key is, and it's like okay, you go get the key, and now it's find the exit, and it's like okay, you go over to the exit, and that's it. Oh. Um. There's this big red obnoxious text in the top center, which says time until Nemesis arrives. Oh, no. <laughs> and if that time runs out, Nemesis arrives and he chases you down and kills you. Um, again, your pistol has unlimited ammo, so there's no reason to, like, shoot anything. The enemies aren't a threat. You have an AI Steve Burnside who ha also has unlimited ammo and will kill most of the enemies for you. Um, yeah. This redoes the, uh, the most of the cutscenes from Code Veronica, but it doesn't have voice acting. Oh no, that's really bad. <laughs> so it's just text on screen as like the characters gestate about. Um, Chris is not in this retelling of Code Veronica. This is a version that here's- What the here's fuck did the they one, do? Uh, uh, Claire and Steve escape on a plane. And then here's uh, during, during the credits, it cuts to uh, Claire and Chris on a plane escaping Antarctica, and Claire is waking up. What? The game was a dream where she and Steve got to escape the nightmare together. That's the dumbest shit <laughs> you've ever fucking heard. It also sounds like this game was rushed. It sounds like that. It's, was it? Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it's an arcade game they brought to home consoles. Like, I don't... But even as an arcade game, it's real bad. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, well. Yeah. Like, no reason to play this. No reason to seek this out. 
That's that's why it's Steve tier. God. Yeah, I, when you I, I thought Zero was next. I don't think I think Zero like from my memory of it was like C or D. Yeah. Um yeah, so that's all. Yeah, going from one of the best games in the franchise to maybe the worst. I'm I'm still doing some soul searching about the You got some games. whiplash going on, but that yeah. shows you the variety and depth to the franchise. Yeah. So next one um Resident Evil Zero. Um, Resident Evil Zero is D tier above Dino Crisis. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. It's just there's there's interesting things to it, especially with the partner system. But it but is it it's, though? No, it it's not. But it doesn't yeah. do anything with the two character gimmick. Like there's no boss fights that use that. Like, uh, like use that gimmick. There's no really no puzzles. It feels like it's. They started this idea of having two characters and then didn't – they started with, like, a Resident Evil game that was one character, and then halfway through they're like, oh, we should have a two-character gimmick. So they, like, adjusted some of the puzzles to involve two characters. But it's usually stuff like one character turns a crank while the other one goes in a room. Yeah. Um, As a prequel, it is so not needed. In fact, it raises further questions. About how Rebecca, like, deals with... Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Rebecca takes on a giant bat, a giant centipede, a prototype tyrant, multiple hunters. And then in Resident Evil 1, she, like, almost gets killed by a hunter. So what's Um, going on here? Yeah. I thought, I was thinking a few days ago that instead of that prototype tyrant, it should have been, like, a prototype nemesis. That's just me. That makes sense. Uh, And, like, why is there no item box in the game? Uh, Because they assume, they could assume that you you could balance or juggle enough of the inventory with both of the characters. Probably, I assume that. Well, yeah, because you have technically have 12 item slots. But that's not good enough, no. But all characters have the item box because, you know, anytime you get to a new area, you wind up shuttling all your spare ammo and heals to that new yeah. area. Yeah. Um, And there's a stupid thing like with the um the fire height, the fire extinguisher in Code Veronica, there's a stupid thing with a grapple gun in this where you get a grapple gun in the very first area, the train. Mm-hmm. And then that grapple gun does not come into play until, like, the very end of the game. So if you left that there, because there were no other puzzles using it, you got to backtrack all the way to the very starting area to get that grapple gun. That's so stupid. And then come all the way back. It's, it like, its main problem is that at this point, it's just another Resident Evil game. You know, with yeah. this style of gameplay, these fixed camera angles, these tank controls, and it's just like, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything new or exciting, even with like the two character games. So, so this is uh, this is the game that demands the the innovation after, like this yeah. is the game that's like, okay, we're done with this. Yeah, this this demanded this is what demands four to exist. Yeah. Um, I think. The only reason it's not F is because that core Resident Evil gameplay is still, like, fun. And you know what? I, l- I like the dynamic between Billy and Rebecca. It just didn't need to be a prequel. That makes sense. Um. Okay, next one is... Gun Survivor 4. Oh Dead my... Aim. <laughs> Wait, did we skip one? You're, you're shooting you should be. What the wondering... fuck? You may be wondering, where's Gun Survivor 3? Gun Survivor 3, my good friend, is a remake of Dino Crisis. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Gun Survivor 4, uh, it's there next to Revelations. This? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is, this is C tier. Uh, hey, good for him. Below, above, above Gaiden. Okay. Good for this. I'm happy for so it. So this... Okay, so this is um, how I said, like, Gun Survivor 1 was, like, almost so bad it's good, but the gameplay let it down. Yeah. Uh, this is so bad it's good, and the gameplay is tolerable. So I'm, I'm bumping it to C tier. There you this go. Game, this game is so stupid. This game is so... The, what's, what's fucking weird about this game is that it reads like another company trying to rip off Resident Evil 4, but this came out two years before Resident Evil 4. 
That's so this this game is about Bruce McGivern, who is a FBI agent sent to uh, stop some shady uh, umbrella executive that escaped Raccoon City, and he teams up with Fong Ling, a Chinese special operative who has a microchip and a tattoo on her arm that uh, is, is linked to an orbital satellite cannon monitoring everything she does. And the moment she says that China may be wrong, that cannon fires. That's, that's, that's literally in the future, Murph. That's going to happen. That's not funny. <laughs> the, the antagonist is Morpheus C. Duval, who has unlocked a combination TG virus and injects himself with it and turns into a woman, question mark? He's there got you. like organic heels and tits, um, Whoa. which is which is aw- odd, but still talks in like this posh, clearly a man British accent. That's funny. See, that's funny though. Yeah, it's so. Uh, my God, this is so stupid. Murph, I have a, like, Murph, well, I have yeah. a question. Why sure. would why would like an evolving mutant, you know, I am I am the apex of evolution, develop high heels? What possible benefit is there for high heels? Um, I can tell you this. There's, <laughs> there's an answer. In the boss fight with Morpheus C. Duval, he does Liu Kang's bicycle kick at you. Ah, oh, I see. So he knows Kung Fu. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, this game's this game's so stupid. And, like, the light gun gameplay is actually, like, they made an engine for it. Um, so you actually are targeting bits of enemies, like their weak spots and stuff. There's this interesting thing where there's like bioluminescent hunters in this dark sewer. So you're like looking for their glowing spot, but like it's it's like deceiving you. The glowing spot is not the weak point. You want to hit like the dark bit around it. That's dumb. That's okay. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah. So I think I think it's a fine C tier. I'm not begging people to go play it, but I'm begging people to take like a look at it <laughs> okay all right good um, stuff and then next. next yeah we're we've got a long way to go till four and um, we've got to get through all the ps2 games okay outbreak one is this outbreak uh, one i don't think so this is outbreak two that's right? outbreak two outbreak one is the second on the bottom row. i saw it i saw it eventually. okay this is d tier um you want me to tell you my experience with outbreak i mean like that this was one of the first like few resident evil games i played before i did like my resident evil playthroughs and like i had no idea what was going on i stopped like probably like three hours in outbreak one yeah um yeah yeah put outbreak one below dino crisis yeah i I think that's fine so i'm more fascinated by these outbreak one and two's ambition Sure. Um, you know, you know, just put just put Outbreak Two up there too, because I'm just gonna they're almost the same game. Um, okay. Outbreak Two is B tier. There you go. Um, so I'm just kind of fascinated by these games' ambitions. Like it's a PS2 era online cooperative Resident Evil game. It's like classic Resident Evil. So like imagine a version of one where I can play as Jill and you're playing as Chris. And we're both just exploring the mansion together at our own pace. Yeah. Like, I can go off in one direction, you're going off in another. Like, and it commits to that. So there's, like, lore documents. There's Resident Evil-style puzzles. These maps are fairly large, especially in the second one. Um, and, and then it goes the step further, where you have eight characters to choose from, and each have their own unique, like, ability and thing they can do. So there's um, a reporter character who has lockpicks, so she doesn't need keys to get into doors. You just have to uh, do the lockpicking, which takes a while. You need the other characters to, like, protect you. Mm -hmm. Um, There's another character who can play dead and just, like, drop on the floor and enemies will ignore him. That's hilarious. Um, That's me. That's totally me. (laughs) Um. Yeah, and then each character for every scenario has their own unique introduction cutscene and ending cutscene, and they all have like costumes to unlock and stuff. See, it's that's so extensive in content. That's enjoyable. Yeah, it's it's a great like package deal, and everything you unlock in Outbreak One can be carried over to Outbreak Two, which has its own bout of like costumes and stuff to do. Okay, so there's so no Outbreak Two Outbreak Two basically is just one, but with way more content. Yes, it doesn't have the same maps as one. It's not like the Hitman uh, 2016 Hitman 2 thing. Sure. Um, 
So the reason why Outbreak 1 is down there is, A, it's, it's scenarios aren't that interesting. Um, the basic conceit of these games is that it's about, like, random civilians trying to escape Raccoon City. Um, and Outbreak 1 has, like, this interesting first level where you're at a bar, and then, like, just zombies start pouring in. Um, and, and then it's, like, the hospital from the three, uh, like, I don't even remember, a hotel where there's a liquor, like, a weird proto-liquor that's, Is like, a human with a long Smash your pass on the liquors. Um, these liquors are very frail and sickly looking. Um, the one- You like a meteor the- liquor. Yeah, I think it's because a, a liquor's all muscle, so it yeah. has to. Um, the weird proto liquor, I guess, because it has a human face. Okay, there you go. Um, ah. Outbreak One is also down there because if you're playing with um AI, which I did because emulator, and also like an online PS2 game, I don't think people like. I don't think there's a service for that anymore. They may they um, may support on PC. I- I, like you could have possibly gotten somebody like me to have done it with you, but but I, yeah, yeah it, it'd be impossible um, to just casually do. Yes. Yeah. So the other, if you don't have anyone playing with you, you'll spawn in with two AI who are like characters chosen, like based on the scenario. Yeah. Um, and those just run around with their head like chickens with their head cut off. Yeah. Um, there's melee weapons in this game, and they can degrade and break. Um, I encountered like I. So you can go for, like, fast stretches where you don't encounter any of them. I bumped into one. He had four broken brooms. Um, another point against these games is you only have four inventory slots oh, per God. character. Unless you pick the character with a backpack, in which case you get eight. There you go. Um, yeah, and then the AI companions. There's, like, a button you can press to do some contextual dialogue. That's sort of how you figure out some of the puzzles. Because a character will say, like, hmm, that, it seems like there's an indent here. And that's, like, a clue to push a bookcase. Um, and it will pop up text with that, like, more relevant dialogue. But your character will also say a voice line that's some, like, generic, like, oh, no, bullshit. And so the AI will just spam that constantly. It's a constant cycle of find anything. We're doomed. Find anything. I think there's something here. Find anything. And it. I just went mad. I went insane. <laughs> and you've and you've I, never been the same since, to be honest. Yeah. So Outbreak Two, uh, still has the contextual dialogue, but removes the voice lines. So it's just better, objectively. It, then. It's objectively better. I think that almost alone bumps it up two tiers from D. Okay. All right. Um, that makes sense. But the scenarios in Two are just wacky and wild and fun. The first level is a zoo. I see that's and that's then, so unique. And there's a, and like there's a nemesis figure that stalks you throughout the zoo and it's an elephant. That's great. Zombie elephant and there's zombie lions and zombie um uh cassowaries. Wow. It's just and then and then the second scenario is this abandoned like mist covered hospital where an axe murderer chases you down because his wife has become a like plant 41. <laughs> and he's been feeding like like uh transients to her all these years. Oh god. And then it's like and then the police station where you have to team up with um what's his name? The guy you encounter. Uh Marvin? And it, yeah, Marvin. Marvin's there and it's like showing how they put up like a defense at the police station. There's that's like a map with like a lot of NPCs who are there to help you out, uh, like other police officers. That's unique. Um yeah, and it ends like right at like right before Leon and Claire would have conceivably shown up. Wow. Um so yeah, Outbreak like Outbreak 2, I really want like a remake or some sort of like just make it like playable on modern systems. And you know? and I mean like PlayStation 2 was not ideal for online no. play. So like yeah, you could totally do like an HD remaster collection that easily enables online play for co-op. And like a lot of these later Resident Evil games will try for online co-op. It's not like they're this is completely new territory either. So, you know, yeah. And it's like it's just like these games are so feature rich and content rich 
that um, I think they really deserve a second shot. Like, they don't half-ass the idea of Resident Evil multiplayer, like some of the more recent Resident Evil multiplayer games are doing. We'll, we'll get there when we get there. So, yeah. Uh, next up. Okay, we're finally at the big end. We're at four. All right. Uh, let me guess. Are you? I don't know how many S's you're gonna put. I think you're still uh, gonna put it in S. Four is a tier. It should be above one, though. It is. Okay, I'd agree with that. That's fine. I I don't really know what to say about four because it's like. One of those "quote unquote" greatest game ever made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. The inventory is fun to organize. Like, how how the fuck does that happen? When they redid that similar inventory for eight, it wasn't fun. Like, yeah. what what was the secret? Um, like it's just the first time I played four, um, I did bounce off it. I I had attempted this like twice, uh, before I actually went through this whole franchise thing and i bounced off four because of the controls and playing the previous entries in the franchise helped me understand how four plays it is almost like those light gun games in that you're setting up your shooting gallery Mm -hmm. you're walking around first and then you stop and then it's like now it's time to shoot yeah and that that helped me really understand how it's supposed to play and they do a lot with that style of combat like they you can shoot weak points, and then it's like, okay, don't do headshots, because that will cause the Lost Flogus to burst out, and you have to deal with a tougher enemy. Mm-hmm. And it's like, shoot arrows out of midair, and then you've got the regenerators. It's just like, it's just such fun, snappy gameplay that you kind of you kind of just lose yourself in it. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I think for me, the only criticisms I have of the game is, for me, this... This for sure lost in horror. I suppose the only moment where I felt like affected by horror was the regenerator moment, like the reveal. I think, but other I than think that, the regenerators and the village to me, like this notion that you're trapped in this like town where the like the people are crazy and you and they don't like you. Them. Yeah, yeah, you can't negotiate a way out. Like that's a good like to me. Uh, that's a very scary premise. And, and like the story is really fun and light and it allows you like, it's not so yeah. much of an exploration game. It's very segmented into chapters, which will become a I running think... theme with the later titles. But yeah, um, it's got a good pacing for that. This is the game where it works. I, I, the other thing I would say, and I said this in the daydream cast with Pavlos was the thing about four is that it's an amazing game and that every time they made a Resident Evil after that tried to do something with it, it was it was for the worse. This was yeah. the start of problems. I think um, the only other thing I'll say about four really is I do like the cast. I like Louise. Yeah. I, Lu- I Louise Louis is sick. Um, you know, I went into this game like hearing nothing but hate on Ashley Graham, and my big takeaway, having finished the game, is like anyone that hates Ashley is a cry baby who's bad at the game yeah it is so easy to take care of her like what are you what are you doing wrong guys yeah. um the introduction of krauser is real weird especially since they try to like like krauser i thought you died and like, who the <laughs> fuck is this he's not in he's not in any of the other games he's not in any other part of the game until it's time to fight him that's, and that's like we have such a rich and storied history together yeah um, the, and I like, I like Sadler as an antagonist. Like, I think I'm going to assume in the fan base, he's kind of overshadowed by Salazar. Yeah. Salazar is a very fun antagonist, but I like Sadler. Like there's a point, there's a cutscene that sticks out in my mind where Leon's talking to him and Sadler's like, um, oh, maybe I should send it to deal with you. It should keep you busy. And Leon's like, forgotten the name, perhaps a senior moment. And Sadler <laughs>, laughs at that. Like he, yeah, and it's not even like like an oh you little shit. It's like oh you got me. I walked right into that one. <laughs> uh, I, you know, it it is a Leon divergence into now. I'm saying one liners all the time, but it works yeah. for what the game is. But it, I still, I do believe this is the same Leon from two because Leon in two is a dude who no one respects even though technically he has like the most quote-unquote authority because of his position as a cop yeah 
but no one claire doesn't listen to him sherry doesn't listen to him ada especially doesn't listen to him and so by four he's like trying to compensate too hard <laughs> yeah. and that's what that's like what that works for the character like he's solid snake if solid snake was trying way too hard yeah it's cute it's adorable uh yeah, yeah. and like there's there's well we could go into it when we talk about the other tiles do you want to keep going uh the only last thing I'll say is when that helicopter pilot shows up in the very last section, and he's like, oh, my friend is here. I wanted him so badly to say it was Ark from Gun Survivor. Oh, God. Ark Thompson. I wanted that <laughs> so bad. You have no idea. <laughs> to really connect the continuity together. Yes. His best friend. Here's the one. Here's what's wacky about Gun Survivor. They reference it at the start of Zero. Oh, God. They say the outbreak before the outbreaks in Raccoon, uh, the Arclay Mountains, Raccoon City, uh, Rockford Island, and Shiva Island. And just now I was like, wait, Shiva Island? That's the place from Gun Survivor. Oh, God. Uh, um, but something tells me Leon's forgotten about his old pal. Yeah. Um, next up is Umbrella Chronicles. Oh, no. Wait, wait. No, this is the light gun. Where do you put this? I played this one umbrella chronicles i put low c tier that makes sense uh the, yeah the bottom of c tier actually um it's a light gun game for the wii it's a it's a good like it's you know it's an act it's the kind of light gun game i have played which is yeah. an on rails type it is fun it is um it's a retelling of one zero and three which yeah. is weird that's a weird um, pick. That's a weird roster. And, like, the the retelling of 3 is a complete, like, absolute retelling. It's a version of 3 that ends at the police station. I, it doesn't... And it, it reuses the maps wholesale from Outbreak. Oh, um, they made... Okay. I can yeah, see they just that. dropped, like, a first-person camera into those maps. I was like, no, wait a minute. That's where the zombies crawl out. That's where yeah. you got to push, like, the wine barrels. What the yeah. hell? Yeah, so um, they were probably reusing some assets there. Yeah. Um, it, 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 what makes this and later Dark Side Chronicles fun is, by this point, I had gotten so familiar with these maps. And these games have destructible environments. Mm -hmm. So going through the uh, Spencer Mansion and just shooting all the paintings And being the able wall, to interact with it, yeah. Yeah, that's all fun and stupid, and it's good. What's good about an on rails game like this, and especially since every scenario is set with two people, like two characters, so it 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 can be a two player game should you so choose. Mm -hmm. Is it allows these characters to have like banter in yeah. the middle of these fights? So this is like the most interaction I've ever seen Chris and Jill have. <laughs> yeah, you should dual um, wield. That's the real yeah. secret. Yeah, maybe. Um. It's, it's in C tier because it has this final, like, bonus campaign, which is Chris and Jill taking out, like, the final, quote-unquote, umbrella facility in Russia, like, Siberia. <laughs> and that is such a slog where it's, like, go down this hallway, kill seven hunters, turn the corner in the hallway, kill ten lickers. Uh-oh, what's this? It's two of the bats from Zero have shown up. <laughs> God. It's, like, such, it's such horde mode that it renders all of these monsters, like, completely unscary and annoying. And also, this is, like, the breaking point for me with all of the Umbrella lore building. Yeah. Um, like, they started as, like, a, a corporation looking to make a quick butt, and by this time in the franchise, they have become the Illuminati cult, question mark? I, you know, I will say, I like what they've done with Umbrella post-Umbrella death. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. especially once we get into the seven stuff and when we get into competitors or other stuff. Like, I, I, I like how they're doing it now. Yeah. Uh, I guess this game's kind of appealing for lore hounds in that every chapter has, like, a bonus scenario showing, like, a side story to that. So it's like uh, Resident Evil 1, the bonus story is Wesker escaping the mansion before it explodes, and he has, like, a final confrontation with Lisa Trevor, which mm -hmm. makes her finale in that game really uh worthless um yeah and it's like the scenario for three is ada escaping raccoon city like what was she doing during the events of three like that's all 
neat and interesting. Um, yeah, it's a C tier. The those final chapters are just so much of a grind. Okay, what's next? Uh, okay, we've got our first movie. We've got oh, Resident shit. Evil Degeneration. Uh, that's is it two this? past three remake. No, uh, over. Boom. Okay. Oh. All right. This is a D tier. What were you hoping for in a Resident Evil movie? Fuck, man, I don't know. <laughs> um, this is when I realized that someone at Capcom wanted Kojima to notice them. This is where I was realizing, like, oh, they really want to be, like, Metal Gear Solid level of, like, international intrigue. Code Veronica it's reminds like me of the Twin Snakes a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, no, I see that. I yeah. see that. Yeah, anyways, continue with the movie. Um, This is like a Claire Leon movie. It's post... Is it post-4? I don't know. No, I think it's pre-4. I think this is pre-4. Wow. Um, and it opened... Like, so we're catching up with Claire post-Code Veronica, and this is where they sort of establish her character for the remainder of the franchise. She joins a grassroots organization called Terra Save which is like Red Cross, but for bioterrorism. God! Oh my god, okay. <laughs> um, and it's, re it's real weird at the opening where they make it seem like, r like Raccoon City was covered up. So, like, people are wearing, like, zombie masks to mock Claire. Like, oh, zombies, am I right? That's <laughs> insensitive. You should be able... Um, to, by this point in time, you should be able to sue in the Resident Evil universe for that. Yeah. Um, so Claire is there because there she's at an airport because um, there's a senator there who looks like the penguin and he's like helped cover up uh, Umbrella and she wants to like hit him with hard asking journalism questions and she's like I bet this this shipment of crates you have coming with you is T virus isn't it uh, and then an airplane crashes into the airport and it's full of zombies and during that whole sequence I was like oh man. A Resident Evil game set at an airport? That'd be real cool. <laughs> um, yeah. They don't stay at the airport long, and then the senator's like, actually, uh, Miss Sanctimonious, these crates are actually full of T-virus vaccine, which, thanks to you, are now all destroyed. <laughs> um, uh, it's... And then, like, Claire's, la like, speaking with the scientist that made the vaccine, and she's like, wait a minute, the only way you could have made a vaccine is if you had samples of T-virus to begin with, and the guy's like, you got me. I'm a former Umbrella researcher. I want to start outbreaks to drive up demand for the vaccine. What the fuck? <laughs> and that's not even getting to, like, Leon's plot where he's teamed up with Not Helena. It's a government agent voiced by Laura Bailey, but it's Not Helena for Resident Evil 6. Um, hey, bro, are these, are these movies canon? Yes. Okay. Yes. As far as I understand, yes. Everything's canon unless unless it's Gaiden, which they have outright stated isn't canon. Because of Monster Leon, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't... Like, the game is, like... It's well animated for being, like, super early, trying to be realistic CG. Uh, Not Helena has a brother who is survived Raccoon City, and he wants to start T-Virus outbreaks to undo the cover-up question mark and then he gets a sample of g virus and injects himself he starts killing all these soldiers and scientists and leon and not helena show up and like immediately not helena's brother like attention snaps to her and there's this real awkward scene where leon places her his hand on her shoulder and is like he's gonna try to breed with you because <laughs> that's the thing the g virus does remember smash your pass <laughs> no, i'm just kidding <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't, I, I, don't worry about I it. was enjoying it when I watched it, I guess I'll say that. Okay. Uh, but the plot's so convoluted. The airplane sequence, the airport sequence is, is like fun, classic Resident Evil stuff. Um, and I guess the final fight is an interesting set piece where they're on like these collapsing, uh, walkways and stuff. Eh. Okay. You know. Wow. I've learned uh, a lot. Okay. Resident Evil 5 time. Uh, you know, is it weird that even after we played it, viewable on my channel, I kind of like it more in memory again. Does that I, sound weird? Uh, 
man, okay, I'm going to state this is strictly my opinion and only my opinion. I am willing to accept it as my opinion. Resident Evil 5 is fucking F tier for me. I don't agree with that. It's, oh my god, I just, you know, they, they say like, oh, it's fun if you play it with someone. Well, I only played it with someone and I still wasn't having fun. I think, I think. Good like, moments. Th There's little stuff. Right? <laughs> what, like what? <laughs> Lost in Nightmares. Uh, oh, sure, the DLC. Uh, yeah, and it lasted yeah. two seconds, and it wasn't that, much of anything. Hour, yeah, that one hour tack on to it, <laughs> like how how long? Let me double check here. Eighteen hours. No. Um. I, I God, I was just so bored, so bored out of my mind. Um, this game really does the lore so bad, like the fact that all the like you'll beat a mission and it's like okay now read all the lore on everything you encountered in the bonus menu and like all of those documents are like 20 pages long and go real in depth and it's like wow i really would have liked to have known this in the story for instance um uh, the the tricell corporation that wesker runs in this game they were one of the main funding agents for the bsaa so then, so like even at the start, the like BSAA they, is a little rotten. They they were compromised. They existed strictly as a front for Wesker to gather bioweapon material to construct the Ouroboros virus. Wow! And it's like you know what? That would have been a great plot detail to include, like the, this notion that Chris is the architect of his own destruction. And then the Wesker could be like, you really think you're working for the good guys? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. And like, it starts on this character arc of like, Chris wants to believe that humanity is worth saving, but he doesn't because he's fought through so many crises at this point. Um, and that's not really followed up on. It's just at the end, he's like, well, I rescued Jill Valentine. I guess humanity's worth sticking around for a little longer. And Sheva's um, a nothing uh side character yeah in a, in a bad thing. way I, I told you right that according to the wiki sheva is the same age as sherry that's crazy that's crazy it is because it means she's only like 20 in this game wow um um let's yeah. talk about the gameplay here's my thing about the gameplay i i think it does attempt to have that resident evil 4 gameplay loop and there is some nice adventure elements and there is some nice back and forth I think for us in our playthrough, and I think in defense of the game, there were times where we would hit a snag or a brick wall and the game or and we we didn't enjoy the game as much. And I think it may have soured the parts we enjoyed. May I think this game's biggest failure is its inventory. That's like fair. it wants to have this Resident Evil style inventory management, but with this much faster paced gameplay and this like idea that you you like you can't drop anything if you could swap if it's like oh i need to pick up those bullets but my inventory is full i'll just drop this green herb i have you can't do that and that comes into problems where it's like you need to pick up uh bullets but you inadvertently got rid of the stack of bullets you had and it picked up something else and so now your inventory is full so now you have to throw away useful items in order to continue playing the game yeah if this had been structured like a doom 2016 where it's all about combat arenas and then you're like memorizing where the items are to pick up so it's like oh i'm out of bullets but i know there's bullets right over there did you did you play any of the mercenaries to this um I mean, no, I mean, I didn't either. I didn't play it with you or whatever. That may that may have been an enjoyment of the pure combat, but even then, like level progression and design here was still, for me at least, lacking, especially in terms of pacing. Where like I'm yeah. actually okay. I will say the start of the game, the story goes really off. I, I was paying attention to your reactions. You could watch back at the reactions, like how it starts the story and how it starts Chris's trauma was very off-putting to you. Like it was very like, whoa, Jill they, they dead. Yeah, Jill is dead. That's the bombshell. And then I was like, well, she's not dead, but I'm not gonna say that to Murph. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so, and then it's like, oh, who's this mysterious female agent with a mask over her face? Yeah, um, yeah. But, but like, I like the levels to start 
with Resident Evil 5. My only issue with the start of the game is, is there's like 10 moments where it's like, oh, what's this horrifying guy is like being fed a parasite and then he becomes the zombie. It's like, you should have shown it once. Let's move yeah. on. Let's keep going. I I like I like it. And then and then once it gets to the swamp is when I started going like, all right, getting a little because getting a little tired of this. It just takes the environment, I guess, for granted. The characters never comment on anything. Like this would have been the great game to have like character rapport and dialogue. Yeah. You know, like really build up a relationship between Chris and Sheva. And Chris being like, hey, is is it normal for there to be, like, weird tribal dudes around here? And Sheva saying, no. Not just that. This is, a, this is a game focused on partners yeah. in, like, a fundamental way, even thematically. And the weird tribal shit is also explained in the lore, where it's, like, Las Plagas causes you to, like, revert to, like, early humanity mindsets. That's why everyone's running around with melee weapons and not using guns, except when they start using guns. That's racist. I'm just kidding. Um, this, game, my, this game is racist, in my opinion. Oh, yes. But it's kind of the racist where I'm, I'm willing to give the designers the benefit of the <laughs> In that community, you're willing to accept your racist. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I'm willing to believe that they were just trying to s make a scary game set in Africa and not a game about how Africans are scary. All right. Um, <laughs> that's the most benefit I'll give them. Well, I mean, four could technically have that same argument. I mean, like, four I guess the other. has that argument because there's that part where Leon, like, comments, like, I'm surprised they know how to use a toilet. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. All right. Leon may be problematic. <laughs> Um, for five notorious Spaniard hater Leon S. <laughs> Kennedy. <laughs> um, my the only care the only new character I liked in five was Josh. Josh and, and Doug. 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 Well, R.I.P. Doug. <laughs> yeah, Josh is good because he's competent. Yes, you don't see that a lot anymore. Yeah, and he survives. Yes, which big was very deal. Shocking. Yeah. Um, like. Chris and Wesker have, like, no relationship. It's just he learns Wesker is alive, and then they do a fight. It, but, and, and this game pretends like it's such a such a complex rivalry. And, like, yes, yeah. they've seen each other before. Yes, there's been altercations. But that's not how the relationship was framed before. Does that make sense? Yeah. These, like... It, this is where it really becomes a problem that these games the franchise as a whole is not interested in backstory for its characters like if we had an understanding of what wesker and chris were like when they perceived they were on the same team like yeah. working for stars that would have made this like final confrontation interesting but the mo our very first introduction to wesker is him betraying chris yeah and then dying um so there's not that relationship and also wesker's plan is really stupid i still don't understand what the ouroboros is even after reading all the documents and the ouroboros enemies themselves look like shit i would i would pass on every single one god i just like like well, i want to not hate the game because you know technically probably there are more people that like it above like anything i have put in the c tier but every time yes. i think about it i just end up getting mad or frustrated or disappointed and that's that's what the f tier all right is it's for. time it's time for bro to advocate Dun -dun 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 -dun. bump bump it bump it to low c low c i i I can't. I I I preferred zero to it. What if I put it above Dino Crisis? It's better than Dino Crisis. Come on. Um, it just. Uh, Tell me what you like about Dino Crisis more than so five. Generic. I uh, I guess I don't like Dino Crisis more than five. It's just Dino Crisis annoys me less. Yeah, Dino Crisis is less offensive. That's fair. Um, here's I, I had enough fun with it, and like, I know people that would argue pretty well in terms of their idea of pacing 
how well they do uh, combat encounters. Um, I think sometimes they do shine. It's just that I, I don't think it's consistent in like I'm any sort of way. Believe, I'm willing to believe that if I had played this on a lower difficulty, it would be more fun. Because some of those later encounters are such like pains in the ass to get through well part of like, it's we probably were... us i'll take a little bit of blame but also it, it goes down to like at a certain point in time it's well, not our fault bugs. <laughs> yeah the the bugs yeah. especially would i would think is or, not our fault or the the machine gun enemies that melt your health yeah yeah and then or like the, the live fun. inventory informs that problem too yeah and like all right to to defend six in this six makes the mechanics smoother to where there's less of an immediate problem with things other than the inventory because six also has a fucked inventory yeah um i uh, for now i will say it is low d this is i'll actually Personally, I would probably I rank. You could probably it. rank it low C. I probably would do that. Um, yeah, but here's the thing: it's not my YouTube channel. This is going up on. No, that's that. That's <laughs> fine. No, yeah, 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 yeah. You can be honest I, with it. I'm stating my opinion, and I also state for the viewers. Put it low C. Yep. People would be like, put it in B. Some people would be like, put it. In B. I. Uh, no, no, and I, I like I said at the start, this is 100% my opinion i understand that is like my problems with the game and we'll get into that with like some later entries did, that did you really did you like. like the jill dlc the lost in nightmares and the desperate escape uh, desperate, desperate escape, escape yeah that's the one i was referring desperate to escape was the most fun we had with it because it was like actually designed with like the co-op partners in and, mind. and 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 the were, fight yeah yeah the the yeah, combat was like much a, more yeah direct and we were using, like, end-game le weapons on start-of-the-game enemies, so they went down fast so that, like, horde mode shooting actually worked. And we're, like, crisscrossing against across this canyon, like, taking up these mounted guns and rescuing each other. Like, if the game had all been designed like that DLC, this would be much higher up. I think but a lot of people, a lot of people in the co-op experience are meant to replay levels over and over again for a sort of grind to like get money and upgrade their weapons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like I think for a lot of people, it is not a singular playthrough, but more so a con uh, like a consistent experience. But the way you play these yeah. games is literally like I'm gonna sit down, beginning to end. That's how we do it, and like there's that's the way you do it. There's that's the only way yeah. to do it. Well, yeah, and then, like uh, games like, like the original trilogy all have that, where you're like, it's sort of teaching you for the second playthrough, and those games I don't fault for that. No, but like it's more like fives. The way fives mechanics work is like you have you have a s separate being. Your profile has money and inventory, and then when when you go, you're basically going into missions earning more money, upgrading your things. And then obviously when you beat the game, you can do what you just said, which is start the game over again with good weapons. And, yeah. and a lot of people like that, but also that is not indicative of the primary experience. Yeah. Um, That's fine. Maybe, we can maybe stick when I deep. have enough time, maybe when I have enough time removed, I will go back and like realize that I was being way too harsh on the game. Um, for now, I think, having like a boiling hot take like that it gives this video spice not just that but like for the record i've played this game like probably two or three times before that this used to be like bc this used to be like mm -hmm. in my b's playing with you i was like yeah there's some there th this ain't fun yeah, yeah. all right um, what's next and next up we have dark side chronicles which is I got it. There it is. Um, Dark Side Chronicles, uh, B tier, low B. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, this just does everything that Umbrella Chronicles did, but better. It retells um two Code Veronica, and I think that's it. And then it has an original Leon story. Yes, with Krauser, right? Yeah, with Krauser, and that's like a cool story. It, and it actually has these all bleed together because it's about like it's about 
Leon's backstory in two and then feeding into where he is now with Krauser and the antagonist they're fighting there has the T Veronica virus. So it has a reason to retell Veronica Yeah. in this version of Veronica. I sort of buy the romance between Steve and Claire. There Both you go. Steve doesn't sound like a little shit. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's better. It has less of an ending grind than Umbrella Chronicles, but it still has that ending grind. Yeah. So that's why it's, it's only B. I think all, I think most Resident Evils fundamentally have a problem near the end. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I think only some of them have the exception to the rule. Uh, anything else on it? Um, no, it's just real cool that they, like, from the ground up, like, remade Code Veronica for with a new engine and dedicated so much time to an original story, whereas it could have just kept doing retellings. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, What's next? Um, Revelations 1. Yo, you like this game a lot, right? This was, this was some good food. Um, this is, this is low A. Okay. Um, which I know... It's going to piss some people off because I, I know when I first said, like, oh, Res- Revelations is good, 5 is bad. Um, this upset which, people, which is, yes. Yes. Um, Revelations 1, it's just, like, a good gameplay loop. Um, I think I said before that this is, like, this story is a better Resident Evil 5 than 5. And it's even kind of a better 4 than 4 because it's, like an actual follow-up to, like, where the characters are now. This is gonna sound so stupid. For me, this game feels limited. I, like, I I can't necessarily buy the this is a proper, this should have been or could have been a proper numbered title. For me, this game feels limited in scope in some ways. No, that's not to say sure. it's bad, but, like, it. for me, I played this on the 3DS. So, yeah. like... So, like, the direct... I'm not necessarily speaking of, like, the gameplay. It's more, like, where the story is and the, the tone going. and yeah. And what it yeah. is as a, as a product. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, I'm opposed, I'm generally opposed to like Resident Evil going into this international intrigue angle of like that. The real villains are the terrorists, uh, mostly because it does that poorly, mm-hmm. but this sort of does it the quote unquote best because it like gives you this idea of this like global organization of the BSAA where you're like constantly changing to these different agents and sort of what their strengths and weaknesses are, where they fall within the organization. Um, this has a very Roland Emmerich feel. Where you're, I can like, see that. I can totally see that. Yeah. You're picking up threads between these different characters. One of which is just like a comedy relief duo, but I kind of like that comedy relief duo. Yeah. Um, and like it's actually scary um like the ooze as an enemy like these these boneless like elamp ray men that like crawl out of like vents in these very small cracks and then when they get to you they just like suck your blood yeah. like those are great s- scary enemies and they have like such variety with their designs <laughs> um having it set on a boat is great fun um bring back that though, guiding yeah, even though towards the end you spend a little too much time in the bowels of the boat mm-hmm. rather than like the luxury cruise liner aspect, that 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 disappointed me. That keeps it from S tier. Um, I know like what really makes it fun for me is the gameplay. Like this to me, other than four, um, has like the best like actual like shooty Resident Evil gameplay. Um, and it's a you know it ultimately is a pretty basic like third person shooter, but that's to me still better than five um and it has like the guns you can upgrade and customize with these parts you find and there are special parts that will actually fundamentally change how the gun like works so it's like you get like it's not even stuff like you get burst fire for your pistol it's like change your pistol into a spread shot and like stuff like that and so you're constantly incentivized to scour the environment for like these special parts so you can get cooler better guns um, it's a good Chris Jill story. Uh, they fight a giant mutant whale <laughs> at one point. That's a fun sequence. Um, yeah, to, to me, it's just sort of unequivocally good. Um, no, no glaring issues. Yeah. It's, 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 so, like, it's solid. It's presence of good uh, over presence of bad. Sure. Um, I know some people probably think the story is like stupid and it is, but 
the way it's presented, I don't mind it. And I mean, looking at these titles, Murph, uh, most are pretty stupid. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wasn't gonna say it, but yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. Operation Raccoon City. This is, I'm assuming, going in Steve, right? You know, it's a D. Okay. It's gonna be a D from me, dog. Is it above Russian. five? I would put it below Dino Crisis. Okay. So, this is like one of the ones I always heard was like, like the worst thing ever. Um, mainly because I was really getting into like gaming around when this game came out. So I was watching a lot of like top ten worst games of when the fuck did this come out? Twenty thirteen. Wait, how old were you in 2013? In 2012? Uh, yeah, I was him in uh, um, I graduated high school by that time, is my thing. Ah. Uh, uh, then I was was only a little behind you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, Okay, continue. Um, You're old, Brogan. Anyway, uh, so, so this game is like a... I guess this one also isn't canon because they've later classified it as a sort of reimagining of the Raccoon City incident, where these, like, mercenaries come in to, like, the, you, have the, you have the umbrella mercenaries, who are the bad guys, and then you have, like, a, not quite the, the UN. <laughs> you know what this um, reminds me of? This reminds me of, like, that, did you play the Force Unleashed stuff with the DLC where you could just, like, murder all the famous Star Wars characters? Yeah, it, it does kind of have that tone. You're, you're right. That It does have that tone. Yeah. Um, so each of these characters, it's a little like the Outbreak games, um, except it's more like uh, Left 4 Dead. It's yeah. not, it's, it has no interest in puzzles. It's strictly about shooting zombies. Um, and shooting zombies here is fun. They're like big blood-filled balloons. They just burst whenever you shoot them with like the smallest amount of firepower. Uh, shooting zombies in this game is really fun. It, the issue is when you start fighting human enemies with guns, um, then you run into some real problems because the game is fond of putting you in bottlenecks where you have to go down like a long hallway and at the other end are like five dudes with machine guns who will just melt you. Um, it, it, that's just not fun. That's that's always consistently bullshit. Um, the only way I got past those segments was by playing the character that could turn invisible and just running past them. Wow. Um, I could conceive more than Resident Evil 5 that this would be fun with friends because your AI companions are just, like, brain dead. Um, they, I saw one get out of cover, stand in open fire for, like, five minutes and die. Um, yeah. I think that all the characters, like the the mercenaries in this game, have great designs and like stupid, quirky backstories. There's like one guy who is literally like called Hunk Junior. He's like Hunk's apprentice. That's adorable. Um, and he looks like he's like is dressed like Hunk. Hunk is like um, my third favorite Resident Evil character. Hunk is great, and it's shocking that Hunk is like technically only in two. They never yeah. brought him back. <laughs> But but he still has like a mystique and a and like a presence yeah. still. Yeah. yeah. Uh. So, and there's like one character who who I'm fairly certain is just supposed to be like a Nazi doctor. <laughs> that um, makes sense. Yeah, and this is like so fan servicey. Like the first time you encounter like if you're playing it in the good guy campaign, you'll meet Jill and she's like running away from quote unquote something. And she's like, run, it's right behind me. And you're like, and the guys are like, what? What's after her? And then, like, Nemesis tears apart a semi. And there's, like, this big, beautiful explosion with, like, him running in front of it. Oh, you know what? I just remembered you defending this game on Resident Evil 6 playthrough. Because this is, like, Resident Evil 3 fan service up the wazoo. It is so so fan service. All right, so, secretly, I'm going to bump this down to F. I'm just kidding. (laughs) <laughs> no, like it, it, it fan services too. Um, you get to encounter. There's a boss fight with Claire and Leon, where at the end you get to shoot them in the back of the head. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Um. Yeah. Um. You know, if it had better gameplay, I think this would be more fun. Sure. Um. It it's kind of stupid in the way the next uh game on the list is stupid. 
Okay. Um, where it's just sort of, it's just sort of fun. What is um, the next game on the I, list? Uh, the next game is Resident Evil Six. Oh, okay. Continue. Okay. Um, Resident Evil Six. Drum, drum roll. Da, 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 Wait, da, no, no, da, time out, time out. I didn't. I haven't edited the Ada footage yet. Can you tell okay. me your opinion after the Ada footage? Or like, what what did Ada change? Um, Ada doesn't really add a lot. <laughs> um, unfortunately, like I, re if you recall, whenever we were playing like the Chris and Jake campaigns, I was like, oh, all the lore has to be in the Ada campaign. The Ada campaign is literally like scenes you've already done. Yes, but I assume it, that. It's, yeah, it's the Lion King one and a half. Where it's yeah. like secretly Ada was there the whole time crawling through a vent. Well, they kind of did that a little bit in Resident Evil 4's Ada campaign where it's like, oh, look at all what I'm doing interacting and yeah. influencing events. Um, yeah. yeah, to give you perspective, Ada doesn't encounter her clone until the end of her fourth chapter. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, Do they explain things? They explain the clone and her motivation, and they sort of explain Simmons' motivations, oh. but, like, certain things, like the, the Illuminati angle, which I didn't even pick up in Leon's campaign, is not touched on. No. Um, yeah. It's... And then the post credit scene for Ada. I don't want to spoil it for you. It's... You literally cannot predict what Ada's, Ada's post credit scene is. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? It's, it's, um, it's a relic of a timeline that didn't happen. Okay. So, like, I'm guessing it was setting up for a game that is not existing ever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. You can absolutely tell that. Um, yeah. Uh, it does make me hate Ada more, just as a concept. Sure. Like uh, the, I'm the curious Ada. to see, because I like Ada. I'm scared. Yeah. I'm scared because this can break me on me liking Ada. It just sort of is the thing of like you can only have a character be mysterious and ambiguous for so long before you have to give me something to grab onto. Did, did this make you like the game less? No. Okay. That I like the game about the same because it still has the same amount of like weird wacky shit. Mm -hmm. Um. So so can I say where it falls? Let me predict what you're going to say. I bet you're going to say high C above Code Veronica. Close. Just below Code Veronica. That was pretty, that was pretty good by me. So I, I came upon a realization about this game that really puts it all, all into perspective. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to make some people mad. Um, but I hope you immediately get what I'm on about. Okay. Resident Evil 6, Sonic Adventure. I can see that. Yeah, that makes sense. Look, here's the thing. is Especially after you've played them all once, I don't think anyone's obligated to play a campaign they don't like again. And like that's not to excuse bad content in a game. But if you play the content you know you enjoy in it, and you engage with it in that way, this game can be, like, profoundly nice. Yeah. Like, you know, if you want to play Half-Life 2 and just skip over Water Hazard. There you go. Ah, but, like, it's also intentionally segmented in those yeah. specific campaigns. Um, yeah, and I think the segmenting of the campaigns is maybe it's, like, worst narrative decision because they got a stretch to give every character five chapters. If it was, as we continually said, like, it's just one singular campaign, but you're playing as different characters each time, like oh. each chapter, that would have been fun. I mean, they should have just, they should have cut stuff. They, they should have just cut yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. they definitely. Um, and, like, the gameplay is, you know, they tried, they tried, but it doesn't, it doesn't all gel there are so many movement options so many enemy types so many guns to pick up but you're all you're always going to be going through combat encounters like the exact same way each time yeah like when you were playing as jake how often did you like say like oh i'm gonna switch to my fists and like 
go into kung fu mode for this combat area. More than most, but not a lot. Yeah. Um, and the healing's so cumbersome with the combining of herbs, and you gotta put them in your tic-tac case and then take the tic-tacs. Like, I don't... That's... Like, if that was removed, this game would not be above Code Veronica. Yeah, I get that. Uh, yeah, if they re if they reworked the healing and and inventory, yeah, I, yeah, I think I think we'd be in the thing. I could see I could see some people being upset. Um, we would not put this in F. I I I think I think in the in the best circumstances, this would be in the D's or like you know what I mean. But yeah. like um, I, yeah, I came away liking this game more. The reason why I prefer six to five, and like. Because technically speaking, six may have objectively, with if you count the numbers, more times where we didn't like it or we were frustrated. There yeah. were a lot of times where we were excited by it. Number one, yeah. and then there were, and then there was a lot of. Uh, for me personally, when it came to combat, um, number one, the campaigns did try for actively different things. Sometimes they did not succeed, but like Leon zombies were fundamentally different than Chris's zombies for instance. Yeah. And, and and the gameplay itself for me what I didn't like about 5 is it was a it was a mix between 4 because 4 was like one of the first over the shoulder third person games, so it was very like Resident Evil still and then like it it, it didn't want to meet the way of Dead Space. Like it's it's too much of a blend mm -hmm. whereas Resident Evil 6 has like a very much more realized, oh, this is a modern third person shooter game. Here's a lot of uh, mechanics for control that enable you to do things. And yes, yeah. it could be frustrating learning those, but when you learn those, there's actually quite a lot of breathing room that five does not yeah. have. Yeah. And it's just like, it, yeah, it's exactly what he said. Like the game never stops surprising. And it's always like, I, you know, it, it is a sort of like it's a roller coaster on fire. It is a roller yeah. coaster actively. <laughs> and you're wondering fire. when it's gonna burn you. And it will burn yeah. you. It's but still at the same fun. time, like, woo, whoop, loop de loop. Woo, a guy turned into a dinosaur. Yeah. Uh, um Yeah, it's just like the the weakest link is the Chris campaign, and that's just because they don't know what they're doing with Chris. Yeah. <laughs> There's a there's a dark story to Chris that's like unexplored in this franchise. Um, I, ah, damn it! I forgot to keep a running tab of how many times Chris loses his like each entry. I wanted to say like, oh, Chris loses an entire squad here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's like three or four, I assume. Um, it is. Oh, uh, let me see here. Oh, Over no. the course of the entire franchise. Uh, so I did the math for the and, Twin Geeks server. And I'm assuming it's after, you're including after seven and stuff, uh, right? Out of, out of Chris's nine appearances in the franchise, uh, he, lo he loses the entire squad seven times. That's a lot. That's a, that's, that's a bad track record. <laughs> that's a lot. And every single one of his stories is in that is like, oh, I can't trust humanity because I lost my entire you're squad. You're not, you're not counting like stars B or or like Sheva's extra team or Josh's team, right? You're not counting those. I or, do count those. You do count those. Okay, because that's, that's part of like the the story. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So um, it's just like death everywhere. Yeah, like you know, I don't want to make this the Resident Evil Six cast. Um, sure. But it's so funny to me that like Chris's campaign starts with like a flashback to how he lost his entire squad and Pierce has to talk him into going to China with like a new squad and that new squad gets taken out obliterated by a mindless invisible snake and Chris oh is like God. no that snake killed my entire squad not again <laughs> the trauma and you know that's just so that's fucking funny man and I can't get mad at the game let, I just can't let me ask you since we've played them would you do the same order of campaigns? Um, because we did skip over. Um, you know, I don't know. I think it, it the story makes the most sense if you go Leon, Chris, Jake, Ada. Ada's campaign makes no sense if you play it first. Sure. Like, 
zero. I, I I think you're supposed to play Leon first for many reasons. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, because the prologue starts with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I, it, you know, we've we've got a whole playthrough where we're talking about our opinions in real time. Yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's a low C. It doesn't have like the charm, like that inescapable charm of Code Veronica. That's why it's below it. Even though sure. Code Veronica made me matter and, and in and terms of influence i don't think this game's gonna influence no anything i'm, so, I'm disappointed because you know jake and sherry really grew on me yeah. i would love to see them back like completely domesticated i don't yeah. think it's gonna happen no and and like and when we talked about zero this was the sign for okay this is dead now yeah <laughs> yeah this, this um, was the death sign yeah uh, so moving on, uh, Resident Evil Damnation. Okay. A, uh, this is a CG movie about international intrigue starring Leon. It goes below Gun Survivor 1. Damn. Is this, this the one where Chris and Leon meet for the first time, technically? No, or is, no. is that 6? That's, yeah, that's technically 6. Okay, all right. Okay, just well, making sure of the Veronica, lore. Code Veronica off screen. Oh, that's so stupid. That doesn't count. All right, continue. Uh, damnation. This movie's real boring. It starts with this five minute introduction to a Eastern European country that's not Edonia from Six. Um, and it's like uh, they after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Uh. They, they, they replaced it with a capitalist government, but some people didn't like the capitalist government, so they rebelled. So the capitalist government cracked down, and the rebels turned to using bioweapons. So now Leon's here. <laughs> um, God. The, the politics of this one are so fucked. It's like, you're supposed to sympathize for the, the rebels who are communist, question mark? They never actually say communist in the thing. They're just they rebels. They say capitalist. They do say capitalist a lot, and the rebels are very anti-capitalist. Uh -huh. uh, but also, the rebels uh, love everything American-made. <laughs> oh, okay. Because um, America's not capitalist. Yeah. Uh, Ada's in this movie. She has the only, like, good, well, okay, good scene where it's, like, this cool see like fight between her and the president of this country. Uh... Uh, where at one point the president like pulls a knife out off the wall and like slashes Ada, and you're like, oh no, Ada's been been murder stabbed, but no, no, Ada's fine. Her dress just got cut and her tit falls out. Ooh. Um, it, it's in a bra, but it's there for the rest of the movie. Oh um, well, we know we know why they did it. it. This movie's so horny for Ada Wong. I cannot describe how horny this is. So what you're um, saying is it's actually like in the D. <laughs> D for D D cast double D right? Yeah. <laughs> um, there's um a real weird scene. I forget the exact dialogue, but it kind of implies Leon saving himself for Ada. Oh no, that makes sense. Um, Leon Leon's biggest weakness is the Ada simp. Leon for sure. Leon Leon got it. Leon met like Strange when he was like in his early twenties, and he's been chasing that. Um. There's a real weird scene where he's fighting a Mr. X in a tank, and, like, the Mr. X is, like, stop, Like, he's trying to run it over while his, like, tank reloads, and the Mr. X is, like, holding it. So Leon's trying to, a it, it, like, smacks it with the turret, like, smacks the side of its head with its turret, and he says, what's the matter? Can't handle the size? Oh, God. <laughs> oh. What makes it F? It, well, it's just so boring. It's just okay. so boring and pointless. And and the politics are so fucked. Like I don't I don't understand anyone's motivation other than you understand them in the archetypes of like oppressive government and rebels. Why do you say, why do you think they make Leon the the protagonist of these? Because he's like Mister International. He's he's a government agent, so it's easy to put him in. There. Why do they do the government thing for these uh, movies? Because nine eleven changed Resident Evil, broken. <laughs> Okay, all right, that's right. It got to go back to the thesis. Okay. Yeah, that I didn't state at the beginning of this. Um, it, yeah, because it in the early days of the Resident Evil, it's about the Umbrella Corporation, and they're making these bioweapons. Keyword making. Um, 
you know, they're all in the trial stages, which is how these outbreaks happen. And they have like these really shoddy bioweapon monsters. And then as the franchise goes on, they're like, well, we can't be having our villains developing bioweapons forever. We need to actually show what they're used for. So they have to imagine conflicts for bioweapons to be used in. Yeah. Um, the issue is, is that none of the writers are clever enough to actually write a story involving war and like what would motivate someone to turn into these horrible nightmarish tools of war. Yeah. Uh like Revelations has a a terrorist organization Veltro. Uh they never say what that organization's motivations are, only that they're terrorists. Like you find <laughs> like recordings from the leader where it's, he's like we shall not compromise in our world view, in our our goals. And it's like So well, what are the goals? <laughs> Yeah, what, what? I don't understand. You're, like, vaguely Greek? Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, d- 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 Damnation is just, it's real boring. There's no point in watching it. Look up the Ada fight scene on YouTube, whatever. Okay. What's next? All right. Revelations 2. There we go. Revelations 2, uh, let me see exactly where it falls. Um, put it just below 6. Uh, there you C-tier. go. Yeah, I see um, it. Some people so, really liked this, by the way. Yeah, and I can see why. I can absolutely see why. It has the Resident Evil Zero problem, where it feels like just another Resident Evil game. Yeah, well, um, I mean, that was like the point of the revelations almost, was because the main line was getting so far removed. So it was like, oh, these revelations, whoa, Resident Evil's still around, guys. Especially with yeah. 2, like where it brings back returning characters it brings back barry yeah it should have just been a barry solo story because claire's story isn't interesting um it like has this idea of an a b storyline um and also this game's like original conceit is that it would be released episodic um that doesn't matter because you can just buy the full game now yeah um but you would do like a bit with claire and barry's daughter moira um and then you would skip to, like, six months later where Barry's, like, picking up, like, the trail and trying to find them. Uh, and he's got this little psychic girl. And Barry's segments are, like, the only interesting, noteworthy part of the game. Because Claire is, like, generic Resident Evil, like, four stuff. Is... Um, I guess the enemies I guess the enemies are a little interesting because this, the T-Phobos virus uh, basically makes you into, like, a psycho from borderlands yeah uh, um real quick rank chris claire leon jim go um chris chris is d tier uh claire is s tier jill why is claire jill? s tier uh because g- 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 uh because she's hot um because <laughs> like you don't like any of the games claire's in um yeah, but in like Resident Evil Two, she's got like this biker chick aesthetic, um, and I'm I'm still kind of chasing that high in all of her other entries. I'm I'm learning a lot about Murph. Continue. Uh, Leon. <sighs> the issue with Leon is they like they jam him into so many other things and make him like real joyless and dull. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, Chris is already joyless and dull. Yeah. Uh, Leon. Leon can be B tier below Jill. Jill hasn't been put in enough things for them to ruin her. There you go. She's sacred still. And then Chris, Claire, Leon, Jill. Was there a fifth one? I mean, you could do like Rebecca and Barry and shit. Rebecca, but... Rebecca can be A. Barry can be A. Yeah, that makes sense. Ethan's S, clearly. Yes, Ethan is S. <laughs> <laughs> that pause wasn't me trying to remember who Ethan was. <laughs> That's for dr- um, drama. Uh, so, so Revelations Two, Barry's um stuff is real interesting because he he starts his campaign armed to the teeth. He shows up ready, there you which go. is so refreshing for one of these characters. Um, but the issue is his enemies are super resistant. He's fighting these new versions of regenerators, which are sort of like cool. They're sort of like the regenerators from Four plus the ooze from Revelations in design. Ooh. Yeah. And they have these, like, specific weak spots that they're only vulnerable on. But Barry can't, like, see where they are. They are. You could just, like, shoot around until you expose it. 
or you can switch to his um, partner character, Natalia, and she can see where the weak spots are. Oh. Um, but she's she's a little girl, so she's a non-combatant. So you switch over to Natalia to like assess the situation, then switch back to Barry and be like, okay, that one's weak spot is the head, that one's its left leg, that one's its arm, and then you unleash the bullets. And that like works way better in execution than it probably sounds on paper. Sure. Especially once they start introducing invisible enemies. Oh. There's like these invisible flies um, that like distort the screen when they're close. And Natalia can see where they are. And if you switch over to Barry and like fire, Natalia will tell you how to adjust your aim. Ooh. So she'll be like a little more to the left, up, and then she'll like say, there, there, fire now. And so you, you shoot. And that's like so engaging every time it pops up yeah um the issue is, is that it's like the plot isn't like that interesting like the story, like following barry especially since he has if you like discounting guiding because that's not canon this is like the first follow-up on barry since one yeah and they reference all of his meme dialogue because uh, technically speaking barry is pretty much only meme now yeah yeah no they reference jill sandwich they reference um, that there's a great moment at the very end where, like, they're escaping the final boss, who is, of course, like, this horrible mutant thing. And, like, they're they're on the escape chopper, and Claire's like, come on, Barry! And Barry's like, no, I'm gonna finish this. Uh, <laughs> he's like, uh, don't worry, Jill, uh, Claire, you'll be covering me from the helicopter. And me? Well, I have this! And he pulls out his magnum. Oh, God. Subtle. Um, the villain of this is Alex Wesker, Al Albert's never mentioned twin sister, uh, and her quest for immortality. Uh, she spends most of the game as a gross monster. There's nothing, there's no point in making her a Wesker at all. Well, they just want to reference the Weskers. Yeah, it, at that point, Barry literally says to Weskers, you gotta be shitting me. And I was like, it, it me. I relate to Barry. <laughs> yeah. Um, the game is, like, scary, but it's, like, that kind of, like, gnarly, gross scary of, like, like, when you're in elementary school and, like, the gross kid spits on his hand and tries to chase you down and touch you with it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm scared, but it's not like <laughs> you're just going for the cheap shit. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's a C tier. Um... I, I could see myself replaying it and liking it more. It could go up, but at, at that point, I was just kind of tired of that kind of game design. Yeah, it needed a shakeup, which which we're mm. gonna go into, aren't we? Yeah. Uh. Well, no. Now we not yet. Relicor. All right. What is this? <sighs> Man, fuck this game. Is this Steve? This is Steve tier. I'm deciding if it's the worst. Okay, let me, I'll, I'll outline it for you, and you can tell me whether it sounds worse than the what I told you about Gun Survivor. Code okay, I, I will be so, the, the breaker. So, to be fair to this game, it is meant to be a multiplayer game. This is, this is Capcom trying to turn the Resident Evil license into an eSports shooter. This is their... You're not selling their, me! This is their killer app to Rainbow Six. Uh -oh. So it has, like, a lot of, like, these maps are very intricate. There's a lot of hidey holes and, like, high mobility. Um, all the maps are, like, drawn from all across the series, which was, like, there's a Code Veronica Antarctica map. And, like, the village from 4 and the village from 5 and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, so, and then, like, in the multiplayer matches, it's supposed to be that it's a three-on-three -three and there are just zombies or uh Las Plagas is milling about, but the those don't interact with you because all the characters have like these zombie jammers. And you can disable your enemy team's zombie jammers, which make it harder for them because now all the zombies are swarming them. Um while you do objectives. The issue is is that this game is dead. Like, yeah. I I think the servers may actually be shut off. Uh, but it does have a single player mode, which is just dropping you in these maps against the the zombies. And it's probably not balanced for one player. No. Um, so these um, zombies can kill you in three hits. That's not good. Um, and then there are the super zombies, which are like the, um, the crimson heads 
and the um the Las Plagas, but the 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 worm is out. I get it. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. It, and yeah. those can kill you in one hit, and they're super fast. That's not good. Um, and it's all mission based, so it's like kill twenty zombies and collect their samples, or uh, defend this area for five seconds. So, which is real hard to do when when there's a super zombie that spawns across the map and chases you down and can one hit kill you. So, so it sounds like the the real difference in the Steve category is Gun Survivor Two is a lazy, half-baked, poor mechanics game. Whereas Umbrella Core um, is very harshly cynical and shallow. Yeah, so both of these are like, don't play them at all. I could think of a reason to play anything in the tiers above. But these, like Code Veronica, Gun Survivor, don't play it because there's no point. Uh, Umbrella Core, don't play it because the one like it's selling point is it's a multiplayer game and the server's turned off. There's no point to play the single player stuff. Mm. Um, the single player stuff pissed me the hell off. At one point I got so mad I bit my thumb and drew blood. Um, That's it's weird. Just, it's just so poorly made. Um, I 100% completed this game. I did all the optional stuff because I didn't want it having any power over me. Uh, the <laughs> is story... that that works? <laughs> Yes. Uh, the story is is that uh, following the following the events of six, um, all these other companies step up to like have their own quote unquote BSAA. I believe this is the introduction of Blue Umbrella, uh, sort of. And okay. you work for them. Um, you're like a new agent, and they're doing like combat trials, trying to develop the the zombie jammer. Mm. Um, and you get like these progress reports where they're talking about like uh, this new agent. There's no way. He's like the Grim Reaper reincarnated, the Grim Reaper being Hunk. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, various people get fired. And this is all done in, like, text documents. Yeah. Um, and then it's, like, the the new administrator. I swear I've seen him before somewhere. The way he talks about the events of Resident Evil 4, it's almost like he was there. I did a DNA test on him, and no, it can't be. So it's like it's supposed to be like a clone Wesker or Wesker himself or maybe a clone Krauser or what 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 the fuck ever. Yeah. Um I don't think this game is canon anymore. I don't know. We'll see. Uh yeah. Just there's no it, it, it may be it made me madder than Gun Survivor Code Veronica. Uh cuz Gun Survivor Code Veronica I at least recognized was a nothing game and it's easy to yeah play. i I, th I think the way this is being framed i would say umbrella core is offensive where we we talked yeah. before about offensively bad versus non-offensively bad i think umbrella core is probably the the, yeah. the, 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 the game center. is just the game's just bullshit um damn i want to move on <laughs> we're done the next one the next one is no where's vendetta Oh. There was one missing. Is, is, wait, is this not Vendetta? What is this? No, that's Infinite Darkness. I, I, was, I was never going to catch that. Uh, what is Vendetta? Oh, I, I didn't put in Vendetta. Okay. Um, Vendetta is another CG movie. It's the best CG movie. Okay, so you fucked um, up. Uh, just, just hover your mouse up in A tier. Whoa! Behind... That's Revelation. crazy. <laughs> this movie is so aggressively funny. Okay. This is there like a genre of movie where it's you don't really want to say if it's good or bad. You just want to tell other people what happened in them. You just want to experience it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, yeah that's a thing. The, the fun of relaying what happens in the movie. I cannot think of this movie without like starting to giggle. Yeah. Um, it's so it, it's uh, it's it's clear it's uh, it's Leon and Chris post six. Leon is drinking himself into a stupor because he's so tired of being a Resident Evil protagonist. He's disillusioned with the American government. That makes um, sense. Chris Chris has lost his entire squad again. Oh no, Chris, <laughs> you fucked up. And then Rebecca. Rebecca's in the movie. There. Oh yeah, she's like a doctor, right? Yeah, she's she's grown up. She's a doctor. She's the she's the de facto protagonist. 
There we go. She's the heart and soul of the movie, which is great because they actually made her look like grown up. And yeah. unlike Zero, they don't make her look like an elf princess. Yeah. Um, there is a part where they're explaining the villain's backstory. And the villain is like this international arms dealer. And it's like showing his wedding day. He's at the altar. He's holding his wife's hand. He looks so happy. The UN bombs his wedding. <laughs> and, and then it's like showing him like getting up out of the wreckage. The dust is settling. He's looking around for his wife. He holds up his arm. He's still holding his her hand, but it's her severed arm. Oh, God. <laughs> and then later, he kidnaps Rebecca because she looks just like his wife. Oh, I see. This and reminds like, me of six. A little bit, a little bit. Um, and then, and then he's like, "Don't worry, I have something to show you." He goes over to this like briefcase and like opens it. He pulls out the severed arm. Why would he? What? Like, Why I'm would he do to... that? <laughs> and he's like, "Don't worry, honey. You'll be your old self once I cut off your current arm and reattach your old one." What the fuck? This is the villain in a Resident Evil movie. It's fucking great. That's and wild. Then, and then, like, he he taunts Chris and is like, uh, you have, uh, it's, what, it's like 11, you have 15 minutes to come and rescue her. Um, uh, so Chris is, like, going through this guy's facility. He gets to this hallway clogged with zombies. And it's this drawn out, you, you watch the Netflix Daredevil, right? Yes. So, like, Season one, episode two, that hallway fight yeah, yeah, at the yeah, very yeah. end. It's like that, but it's Chris versus a horde of zombies with like an AK with a bayonet. It's the most gratuitously choreographed shit. And then he gets a, a, a elevator door at the other end of the hall opens. Ding! More zombies come out. He has to fight them. them. Then uh, vroom, 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 vroom. Leon comes down on his Ducati motorcycle. <laughs> it's a brand deal. So this and is a very joins. extra movie. It's so, and then he joins in, and he's doing all this gratuitous choreography. It goes on for like three minutes, and then wait, is this the is this the movie where Leon's on a motorcycle and the motorcycle flips, and then he like shoots the motorcycle to have it blow up? Yes. Is this the movie? Is this the movie where there is a gunfight? Yes. And, and yes. they're dodging every single bullet. Yes. Yes. So that hallway fight, they're like going through it, goes on and on. And then like Chris checks his watch. He's like, oh shit. We've been fighting zombies for five minutes and made no progress. <laughs> <laughs> There's a part where Leon is is doing hand to hand combat with the with the villain who's turned into a tyrant. Um, and the guy's about to kill him when a helicopter shows up and it like opens and it's like Chris's like new team, uh, and uh -oh. like they have a sniper rifle, that's a rail gun. Oh, and, and the person pulls the trigger, it blasts the villain's head off, and then I shit you not, I shit you not, it cuts to a. This takes place in New York. It cuts to a wide shot of the beam passing through five more skyscrapers. Oh my god! And, I, and what if for a, like five frames, one of them starts to collapse with screams. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I, I started cry laughing. This movie's so fucking funny. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, the A tier, A tier. I give no fucks. The, uh, anything that brings me that much joy is A tier. There you go. That's what matters. That's what we live for, everybody. Okay, I'm I'm so sad. I didn't I didn't put it in. Um, you fucked okay. up. Next next up, um. Resident Evil 7. Oh, shit. Is this A or is this S? Resident Evil 7 base game is probably B tier. Okay. With yeah, the, the DLC is fucking sick. With the DLC, the full package, it is S tier. Yeah, did you so play Madhouse, by the way? Madhouse difficulty? No. I did do Jack's 55th birthday party, which is a trip. Oh, dude. Madhouse, like... Madhouse is the kind of like difficult that's good. It's I would recommend Madhouse uh if yeah. you ever go back um, to it. So Resident Evil 7 like base game, it's this great uh survival story. It's got this great Texas Chainsaw Sam Raimi influence of like this family. I love Jack Baker as a protagonist. Uh, yeah. Not protagonist, antagonist. 
Yeah. Um, it's got a real great twist with Evelyn at the very end, where it's like the moment you realize who Evelyn really is, like all the pieces fall into place, and you're like, oh shit, all the signs were there. Yeah, it's um, obvious. Yeah. I think it's it, like base game is B tier because it doesn't have a lot of enemy variety. And also, like, play this was the only one I've played like before. Playing yeah. it the second time, um, when you know where to go and what to do, it, the, it really throws off the pacing. Yeah. Like, I could have assumed it took like a long time before you ever started interacting with like Marguerite and Lucas. But no, that first section with where it's just Jack, that goes by like in an hour. Yeah. If you know, yeah. What, if you know what you're doing. Um, yep. And then, like, the ending with the boat, where you're playing as Mia, that's, like, so drawn out. That's when the game starts to lose it for me. It's so visually uninteresting, and it's, a, it's like, a maze, and I have no idea where I'm going. I, I use, like, <laughs> I use trial and error guesswork to figure out where to go and, on that stupid boat. And, and, and then after the boat, the game really doesn't know how to end. It knows how to end with Evelyn, but it doesn't know how to, like... Do the lab. It so literally the game. lab yeah. in the base game is a room. Yeah. Um, so add in the DLC, which is all varied and interesting and have their own like uh things to unlock. That's all great. Like if it was just like the uh the band footage stuff yeah. with the with like the blackjack, the escape room. Like the blackjack has unlocks and special powers you can do. That's that's fucking great. Yeah. Um. And then there's an escape room thing with Marguerite where you're like held bound into the bed and then you have to like escape. That's so spooky. Oh, dude, that's great. It's fantastic. That's a good. Um. And then you've got like you've got the Chris campaign, uh, whatever. It's, a, it's got yeah. its own unlock. And then you've got the end of Zoe, which should really just called uh, just be called Grandpa of Fists. Um, oh, dude. Swamp Grandpa of Fists. That's that's like stupid in the way in the good way. That like there's a particular kind of like Resident Evil stupid, and End of Zoe is the Resident Evil's good stupid. Yeah, I agree. And it, like to me, before it, I was really sour on like the the most sour part of Resident Evil Seven as a story is the Zoe stuff. And then like I think I think at the very least it ties it up in a bow to where I'm less like upset by it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want Zoe to come back. I want Joe Baker to come back. I yeah. want Joe Baker and Mar Marvel vs. Capcom. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I think it's just it, like the complete, like a gold version or whatever they call it. Um, that feels complete and content rich in a way a lot of modern games aren't. Yeah. Um, and even it has like not even those banned footage stuff. It has like these goofy little modes like the Madhouse difficulty or Jack's 55th birthday, which is so like just fun it just has fun with it it knows that it has a fan base particularly specifically for resident evil 7 it just has fun with that yeah it, it and you know something it's so bold in a like in a reboot sense in terms of like innovating but then there's still something so essential it goes back to the yeah. spooky house it did spooky yeah. house right and it doesn't it's not like a a soft reboot because it does um playing through the entire franchise up to this point there are references dotted around this game that you would never know unless you played the side games um not only is there a news article referencing the reconstruction of idonia from six there's like a mystery novel you can find that's written by the uh, head of the bsaa from revelations there's a newspaper article written by the journalist character from outbreak Gosh. like it's so there's like so many fun little easter eggs and i felt so rewarded having gone through it again like knowing all these references because the first time it was just like yeah who gives a shit well the first time i played it because you it didn't like know this evil game for people who hadn't played any of the previous ones and in that it works it's a great entry point because yeah. it teaches you that resident evil gameplay like it still has these resident evil style puzzles like the like the shotgun trap room yeah you know and stuff like that and inventory um, does matter i think inventory is is pretty okay in seven yeah, Especially in terms of, like, shots. using health and combining health. It yeah. does all that right. I think, yeah, I think 7, yeah, that's S tier. I have no qualms about putting that in S tier. Uh, I agree. Okay, time to, time to make people mad again. Remake 2. Oh, no! Murph, you're going to have some bad takes now. Let's hear it. Uh, below original 2. That, ah! Uh, mm. 
See, here's my thing. I would agree with that, but I'd have original two if like original two was higher up. Like yes, like this would be like okay, yeah, this all makes sense. Oh yeah, Resident Evil two. Even like I would put personally, I would put three after this, but like in in the system, I would in the system now because yeah. I know I can't argue for you against three. Like this is my dream right now is having two in A and then remake two in uh, yeah. right below it. But um, the way it is is the way it is. Okay, so what if I said this for you? Now, in, over the course of this video, I've had time to dwell on it. What if I said you could move original two below three? That makes sense, because I think two is better than Revelations. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can put it there. I think two has, like, when you were talking about the story and stuff, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, but those story beats are real good and executed. It's just like the the gameplay. And I liked, and like to defend too in another bit, I liked some of the unique enemies. Like the introduction of the liquors. I actively like the liquors. Yeah. And I like the liquor reveal, et cetera, et cetera. It's got good stuff to it. Anyways, remake two. So remake two, I'm going to keep high B tier. It can stay at the top of B, mainly because it doesn't have, it doesn't ha do the A, B storyline good. No, or it doesn't. at all. No, and, um, and the thing is, is like, Really, really what you're playing the B story for is literally to experience the Sherry bit or the Ada bit. You know what I mean? Like you're really just trying to get that extra content out because in terms of base game, it is the exact same. But there's no point in calling that a like no. B story. It could just be called the Claire story, the Leon yeah. story, right? Because – the Claire A, Claire B, I don't think play out that differently. The, the other, the, here's the only difference I know. The only difference I know, did you play, what it, What was your order? I did Leon A, Claire B. Okay, the only difference I know, and I think is the only difference that matters, is Claire meets Marvin in Claire A. Yeah. That's it. I was going to say, the only difference is how you get into the police station. Yeah. Um, The game just... The game just frustrated me and not in a fun way. Like I said on the Daydream Cat, I don't I don't mind games being consistent. I think there is a time for unpredictability and RNG in your systems, but if I'm in circumstances where I have no idea how many bullets a zombie is going to take um to get through when so much of like that classic PS1 Resident Evil style for me like what what was so engaging about encountering enemies in that is that bullet economy of being like do I have enough bullets to remove this zombie from this area which is permanent the zombies don't come back they don't change rooms um, or am I skilled enough to run around it and in this like running around the zombies just never felt satisfying because they just go from like 0 to 60 with these like strange grab hitboxes. It's like it's uh what's that one enemy in Sekiro that makes people mad? Uh the chained ogre. Yes, yeah, the gra it's, it's cuz like, you can't parry grabs, that's why. Yeah. Yeah, it's like every zombie is the chained ogre where it's like I thought I got past it but nope, I'm caught in the grab animation. Yeah. Um Okay. It's just like and because that grab animation goes on so long, now there's another zombie that's like, close the distance, and it's going to grab you now, and oh, here comes Mr. X, and he's going to punch you and kill you. I, um, I have three defenses for Resident okay. Evil 2 Remake. One of them is not going to work on you. One uh, yeah. of them is, I think this game is better than Resident Evil 3, and I think Resident Evil 3 is like a beat. Like, for me, I don't know if we can just go ahead and do it. For me, Resident Evil 3 is probably right there. The 3 remake? Yes, 3 remake. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I recognize... Do you, should we just talk about them together? If you want, we don't have to. I'm just saying it now when I, when I do it. Like, in my head... In my head, I would, I like, to me, to, uh, Remake 2 is objectively, not as objective as I personally yeah. feel, it better than 3. It's more no, inspired, I, it's more innovative, and it's, like, smarter about things. 3 is definitely that tighter experience we talked about before in the originals, but also uh, Remake 3 has extra issues. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that I, I totally get. I, like, I believe I said on the cast, like, at... 
objectively, I believe Remake 2 is a better game than 3. I just had more fun with Remake 3. That makes sense. Um, because its gameplay is more... Because they give you everything that I wanted in Remake 2, they put in 3. Like a dodge move, where you can actually get out of um, grabs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, if if someone could fan patch that into Remake 2, it would shoot up. Yeah. If I had a way... Because so much of Remake 2 is about forcing you into damage, it feels like. Like, you're you're in a save room, and Mr. X is clearly just outside doing pacing. Yeah. And, and, like, I could see someone saying, like, oh, well, you know, it, it's fun because it's forcing you into this conflict. You can't just wait for him to go away. But it's like, well, why couldn't I just wait for him to go away in a better designed game? Okay, all right. It's time. It's time to do the other points for two. Okay. All right. Number one, when you talk about the economy, there's. I don't know how you approached the zombies, but I. To me, number one, I think there's a there's an interesting horror element. I think this game does a really good job, um, doing what remake one did, except to another level of innovating and. It, obviously this is like a completely different game than two like like these are completely separate whereas remake one is literally like one remade um yeah but that being said um this game does a really good job elaborating on things and setting a tone and a gameplay formula and like just a really good vibe it looks amazing feels amazing and has that sort of tension the tension is not in the bullet economy anymore the tension is literally in crossing the hallway and crossing the hallway is is something you can master because there is a consistency to it but the consistency doesn't come from that bullet economy anymore so i would yeah. wonder how would you feel in like 10 years or another revisit where you've sort of accepted the the way it is instead of you how you felt the way it should be and um, I wonder how you would feel about the game on that because there was a lot of this game that wasn't about killing the zombies. A lot of this yeah. game was about, especially after you figured out your route, uh, hitting them in the legs or otherwise debilitating them so, for just enough time to get past the hallway. Yeah, and yeah, I I didn't go for the kill. Um, I, I, I was like shooting them in the legs or trying to get them to stun the issue is, is, like, I would shoot them, and they would do what was very visibly to me, like, a stunned animation, like, oh, I'm recoiling back. So I go to run past them, but then they recoil back and go immediately into a grab and get me as I'm going past. You need and to get like, good. You need to get good. I'm <laughs> just I kidding. Just, it's just, like, it, if I if I did nothing but play this game, I'm sure I would see, start seeing, like, the numbers in the Matrix uh, I'm not even I saying it, see the numbers in the matrix. Literally, I was just saying is like the ten the way they did tension is different than the bullet economy uh, approach. Yeah. That's it. Um, that that's all I meant by that. Yeah, it's just that tension goes away when I'm when I start spewing curses because I got grabbed and now I have like I have no heals, so I got to reload a save. This is the most I did reloading of saves in this entire playthrough but um, but like okay here's the thing is number one this game has adaptive difficulty where like they, they will plop like after you've been through an area where they'll they'll plop uh health in somewhere that that they that you they think you need it um my biggest problem with the game is actually the boss segments especially with uh yeah. Uh, what's his face? The fucking scientist. Birkin. Birkin, yeah. With Birkin, all that shit is uh, very, like, on replays or on any sort of dive, uh, very limiting and unfulfilling. Especially since you have to do the same bosses as Claire and Leon. Yes, like, which wasn't the same in the original. Again. Yeah, yeah. Why do you have to do the crane boss again? That's so weird. And the only way to beat the crane boss is doing the crane. Yeah, yeah. It's dumb. Um, it's... No, no, but like to me, to me, like when when remake two came out, it it satisfied me in the same way. Where it was like I when I heard there was gonna be a remake, like because I've been a Resident Evil fan for a while. When I heard they announced there's gonna be a Resident Evil two remake, I was like, oh shit, 
we got we got the S tier Kino right here. Hopefully, Resident Evil Two is my favorite out of the trilogy. I was like, I'm I'm hoping for some fucking Kino. When I played it, I didn't get better than two, but I got the slivers of the Kino here, especially in terms of the radical new approach. Because in seven, all its fairness, seven and eight aren't necessarily what everyone wants in a resident evil and i think yeah. i think the remakes here and here do that yeah it's just i just can't get away from like i get it it doesn't have to be, be i think i said my case pretty well that's it yeah um like maybe it's a five scenario where i will once i've i've cooled on it i can come back and like play it knowing how it's supposed to be played um but also i kind like i i kind of already did replay it because i had to go through as claire <laughs> I, w I wonder how you would have felt if you sp like especially in general in all of these games how would it have felt to do scenario twos at like long after the fact like on a revisit you know what i mean that would have been so weird yeah. but anyways whatever uh so yeah it's gonna it's gonna stay in b for me are you um, are you is is this the right spot for three um three remakes since it is my list goes above two remake is it going uh, in a no it stays in b um it just it's it's such an inverse of remake two um where the story is remade worse but the gameplay is remade better um, well, well, like, the other thing is, is, like, literally, Remake 3 is two remake just with better stuff in it. Because they basically yeah. waited a year and then popped it out. I think it looks better than two remake. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. No, maybe no, it is. It, it, But they literally just built on top of it. Whereas, yeah. like, two is a ground-up re-approach. Re you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I get um, it. Uh, remake 3, it just has these great, like, um... It just does what I like about original three, where it's like this feeling of being the one living person in a like a city gone to shit. It's yeah. like I don't know. That's a very appealing like video game exploration environment to me. Sure. Um. Uh, the issue uh, it it has difficulty telling you when you're hitting a point of no return. Um. Yeah. This game doesn't really have. This game just kind of has instant zones where it's like, okay, you're downtown, now your sewers, now your hospital, now your lab. You don't go back between any of these places. It's like Bioshock 2. Um, uh, but that said, I really like the gameplay. I think it captures that quick pace, that like panic, uh, that panic horror tone that Original 3 does well. Um, just with a worse nemesis. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know really what else to say other than it is an inverse two. Can I say a hot take? Sure. I don't know how hot this take is. I like this. Ne I don't like how nemesis is done, but I like nemesis design in this. I, I actually I like it more. There's... I. You know, someone could say something about the trash bag uh, costume over the trench coat thing, but I don't like the trash bags. I I, I like it. I don't know, man. It works for me. I, 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 there's bits of this game I really enjoy, and like yeah. honestly, it does feel like you're living in a movie. Like you're you're breathing in a movie for like f uh, like five hours or whatever. Yeah. Um. Nemesis is the most disappointing part of Remake 3. It's like like the it's so poorly done they removed him from the title. Yeah. Um like he gets his iconic ro rocket launcher and that's like actual iconic, not Ubisoft iconic to yeah. steal a phrase. Um but and it's just for like one quick sequence where you're running away from him and he has bad aim. In yeah. the original game, you, you know, you would just he would just show up with the rocket launcher, and you're like, "Oh, I'm unprepared for this." Yeah. 
Uh, and then he mutates, like, so quickly. You don't get any time to enjoy him, really, in his most iconic design. Ne- Nemesis, as, like, a being doesn't exist. He is, like, there is, like, one or two moments where he's unscripted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Whereas, like, Mr. X is fucking, like is a being in the world. And obviously you complained about the AI of him right outside the door, but like, it's not like Lady Domitresque or Jack Baker is a smarter AI than fucking Mr. X. No. Yeah. Um, I guess the, uh, those two talk to you, which is fun. That's fair. Um, yeah, it's just... No, I get it. I get it. Um, it was th- I it. like three. I like three a lot. Yeah. I'm going to keep it high B just because I did have fun with it. It's a real pretty game. Yeah. Um, it's unlike Remake 2 and 5, I can conceivably see it going down as the years go by. Yeah. So who knows? We'll do a... We'll do a check-in. Um, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're old. We have giant yeah. beards. Like, how did you feel about this one? <laughs> Uh yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we're we're in the okay. home stretch. This is I think this is going to go Okay, fast. village. Yeah. Village is S tier. Above 7. Your silence speaks volumes. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I agree with this list. Here's the thing is I was like vibing with this list for like a long time. A lot of these were like obscure ones i didn't play like even then like it really started to hit at some point i was like oh this this list is looking a little different (laughs) um so uh seven um seven i just really got into its stories and characters you mean Um, village yes i get it no village damn it (laughs) no it's all good Um, i can see i can see for sure an argument of eight over uh seven um in in different contexts for like player values or priorities um but like to me to me i personally wouldn't put village in s i'd put village in like low a high b Mm. um it's just i love ethan winters in this game so much yeah he has no he has no thoughts in his head just love for his family and injuries for his hands um I, it's just one of those games where I'm so intrigued to see where it's going. Like like original re, like original Resident Evil One, it keeps surprising me. Um, where it's like you don't really know where it's going to go next. Like, okay, you're going to the Hunchback level. Whoops, it's actually a Fishman level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and and you know what's so cool is like number one, the village is an environment to revisit and explore further. Super yeah. awesome, super amazing. New enemies pop up. Yep. It's just everything I like about Seven, but more. Yes, um, uh, I think that more stuff's enemy really variety, cool. More exploration. I love the Duke. Um, it's like one of the few actually genuinely scary segments in the entire franchise. Um, with the doll. With the dolls, um, like yeah. I was genuinely. I don't know if you were looking at the Discord around that time, but I was genuinely frozen in fear. It, it's it's good it's good and it's one of those few moments where it's like the, i think i think seven and eight wanted to assert some like oh yeah we got this stuff and like obviously there's influences in like pt to seven and eight and i think yeah. it still is able to make a really smart statement about like oh yeah no resident evil still has survival horror in its dna and it can still work um, I think yeah. I think I said my problems on the cast. Um, yeah, I said I'm on the cast already. Uh, I I I could see where you're coming from though. Yeah, I, I'm uh, wondering why we haven't gotten DLC. I suppose it's because of COVID, but like I don't. It, there's like this reverse game mode, which was supposed to ship with the game when it first came out like two years ago. But that's slated to release later this year. It's that's like so weird. Television. And that's so dumb. Capcom's so fucking dumb. Nobody wants to play Reverse. People want to play like... Yeah. People would have spent another fucking $20 or 25 on a season pass. And if, they, if, if it, especially if it was like the DLC in 7, people would have I, done it. 
And yeah, things I like Chris is so. not a hero for the record was stuff you didn't have to pay for. Not a hero was free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I want I want an eight a village DLC that's like a period piece. Like I want to be Spencer coming to the village. For or, the or like time. going back in time and seeing like a different era. I think is yeah yeah that exactly. Personally, like seeing a different set of four lords because like there's such like a complex lore to village that's kind of like. Mm-hmm crazy and baffling but also really interesting at the same time and then the other thing is is like there's a lot of moments you're gonna ask yourself questions in village and what's so nice is the game tries to answer the ones that you felt needed to be answered yeah or even ones that you had just accepted as being the way things are like when ethan reattaches his hand there's an explanation for it yeah, you're not you you just write that off as like a goofy funny moment and then it's like, "Oh wait, that's like the seed of a plot like a payoff." Shit, like dude, that. again, like we said it on, I don't know if we said it on the cast, but Resident Evil 7 had hidden death scenes that were so crazy but are explained by this moment in yeah. Village. So like it like I guess I don't know if they sowed the seeds or they just accepted the crazy but either way, accepting the crazy or sowing the seeds, village works. Yeah, I think um, it's just like I'm still I'm still riding the high from it, and I like beat it like three weeks ago. Um, it's it's one of the few where I want to like boot it up right now and get back to playing more of it, and that's kind of what the S tier is. All three of these games, I would immediately jump into right now. That's sick. Yeah, I I, I can understand that. That that's a good approach to S tier as well. Um. So yeah, Bill, Village is great. No idea where the story's gonna, where the franchise is gonna go from there. Genuinely, I have no idea. It's weird that this is probably like the proper final statement to the franchise retrospective, but then there is, uh, so two got- two uh turds uh, right down here. <laughs> so uh, next up is Infinite Darkness. Okay. What is this? I don't um, even know what this is. This is. The Netflix series, but not like the one like the Netflix. Netflix this is the series. CG Netflix yeah. series. Yeah, it's it's well, it's a series. It's four half hour episodes. So really, it's a movie that they cut up into four episodes. Okay. Uh, Infinite Darkness, shocking even myself, uh, can go in above Umbrella Chronicles, C tier. Above, you said. Yeah, that's Actually, crazy. Above Ga- above Gaiden as well. Okay. But below Gun um Ten A. <laughs> yeah. Um. So this one is a story of international intrigue starring Leon, but it actually has a statement to make. Oh. About uh. So so the story of this is Claire and Leon. Um. This is immediately after four. In fact, like everyone's like, hyping Leon up because he's the man that saved the president's daughter. You get to see Ashley's father. She's a she, He's a character in this movie. Um, That's amazing. And it's Claire and Leon uncovering the fact that the U.S. used the T-virus in the Middle East. Oh, there we go. We have some actual politics. Yes. Um, and Leon becoming very disillusioned with the American government as a result of that. But it... Um, also ends with him wanting to stay in and try to like fix things from the inside and claire being like mad about that like there's an actual a <laughs> actual payoff Murph, divide in their relationship Murph, i have a question for you yes all right here's a pitch i want to, I'm, I'm gonna paint you a picture resident okay. evil let's say 10 resident evil 10 oh, okay all right. all right imagine it is i don't know let's let's say 2030 Leon S. Kennedy is the president of the United States. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is uh, this is this an acceptable premise? I don't I don't know if Leon wants that much power. But I it's not it's that he wants it, it's that there's no other man for the job. I could see Claire becoming president. <laughs> okay. Well you simp for Claire. So we already yeah. know your opinion, boy. <laughs> Yeah, but she's, like, doing the grassroots campaign stuff. She's, you know, she has a good resume. 
<laughs> Leon uh, saved the world countless times. Whatever. Continue. No, was there more to your pitch, or is it just Leon President Simulator? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like Saints Row 4, basically. But but then it's like, oh, Mr. President, there's a BOW attack. He's like, I got it from here. <laughs> then he, then he like, like Metal Wolf Chaos? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay, I'm kind of on it. I'm kind of on it. And yet, um, I think the vice president is like secretly a Wesker clone. There we go. I'm I'm building it as as we're so going. Leon in his fifties. <laughs> I wanted it to be, but I, uh, but I think largely these games are in real time, and I think the Resident Evil Ten will happen by 2030. So I'm assuming not. Okay. So anyway, Infinite Darkness. <laughs> That's uh, fair. Uh, yeah, it's got like it actually it just lets the action take a backseat to sort of intrigue and uncovering things. There's like a very brief zombie attack on the White House, which is strange. Um, and it, it's I don't know. It's just, like, more engaging than the other, like, CG movies. Except for Vendetta, because Vendetta's amazing. Uh, the, the, it's above damnation into generation, because it actually has a statement. It has an idea of international intrigue. Yeah. And why maybe the U.S. would use bioweapons in a conflict. Um, all the action feels, like, motivated. It's, uh, it's the remake, Claire and Leon actors... Uh, sort of taking on roles like, you know, being further along as the characters. Like, you know, the prospect of getting, like, Remake 2 Leon in a a Resident Evil 4 remake is very juicy to me. Because that's, like, because he's a cool guy. I like the, I like the actors, yes. Yeah. Um, the issue is, is that this is, like, all the CG movies have very brooding, serious Leons. Yeah. Which is not who Leon is in 4. Like, we talked about it. Leon is a big appeal of 4, because he's, like... He's a dweeb. He is, like, action yeah. star dweeb. Yeah. And this, they, they're, like, too in love with Leon being cool. There's a real weird sequence where Leon's with, like, this uh, Japanese CIA agent. And he's like, well, maybe after this, uh, we can get, a, like, a drink later. And she says... Uh, wow, you work fast. And Leon shrugs and says, what can I say? You're my type. Oh my god. Leon, you have, oh my god. Which is a creepy statement, right? Oh like, my. A does, a does not end this movie. God, Leon, you have a problem. That is his character weakness. Jesus fuck. Um, yeah. So... Uh, yeah, it, it's a solid C tier. I wouldn't beg anyone to seek it out, but, you know, it, it's better than the other ones, and I think that's what surprised me. Okay, well, this is the crown jewel, the the well, final um, note. Clearly, clearly, Murph, it's top of S tier. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Raccoon City. I actually have above Outbreak 1 in D tier. Damn. Damn. You liked this movie. I wouldn't say that. It's in D tier. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. At what point do you like these games? At what point did I start liking these games? But Laura, like, on this tier list. At what point oh. is it like, oh, I like this game? Um, I think, I think C tier are all games that have fun moments or aspects but are just, like, let down by greater glaring issues. D tier is where it gets harder to defend. I can think of, like, maybe one or two things. But that's that not like what I games. asked. Oh, sorry. Maybe I misunderstood the question. Like, where where does it become, like, I like this? Yes. Gaiden. Okay. All right. I just wanted to know. Okay. That's right here, dear were, viewers. Okay. Yeah, you were asking for like the actual game. I thought yeah. you meant like as a greater whole. Yeah, no, no, the, yeah, you're giving. Yeah, you were giving me like quality statements of like, oh, this, this, this. I'm like, no. What? What point was like Murph's like? Yes, the, these are games I like personally. I, I was curious. Yeah. Okay, so tell me about Welcome to Raccoon City. 
Um, it tries. It really does. Like, I get the sense that the writer, director has likes and has played the games because they keep jamming in these little, like, references and nods and sometimes just taking things whole cloth. Like, they just straight up play the um one uh, video reel from Code Veronica where it's, like, the Ashford twins ripping wings off dragonflies. Yeah. Like, that's just recreated in live action. It's real strange. Um, It's just not a good movie. Um, It's just... Like, that's devoid of the Resident Evilness. It's not a good movie. It's so haphazard. It really it wants to tell two and one stories concurrent. So it tries to take, like, this Roland Emmerich approach of, like, multiple characters moving throughout a crisis. And it, like, almost works. It almost works. But, like, it's so, like, the handling of Birkin, the handling of Wesker especially the absolute absence of any character for Jill are all just, like, real disappointing. Um, like, it's so weird when Birkin mutates, but he can still talk in his mutant form, and he's, like, shit-talking Chris about, like, oh, you really thought I loved you because, but you're an orphan, Chris Redfield. Oh, my God. It's, like, so, it's so strange. And then Wesker's, like, just a dude. He begs for forgiveness because he screwed everyone over. That's not the Wesker I know. He's like, I'm so sorry, Jill. I was just trying to get out of Raccoon City. That's not the Wesker the I know. Yeah. No. Um, I, I, I would, I would give the team the benefit of the doubt for a sequel. I'll yeah. say that. Wow, that's that's high praise. You heard it here first, folks. I would not. I would not be mad nor surprised if a sequel was announced. Did it do I well? I don't think so, but it was also made on the super cheap. The CG in this is like egregious. Like when the liquor shows up, it works. It looks worse than an <laughs> outbreak. Oh God. Um, Lisa, like Lisa Trevor's there, and she's like Jill's secret best friend from childhood, but it's like. When she's a child, it just looks like Lisa Trevor. But well, as a we, child. we did talk about this in our Resident Evil 6 yeah. playthrough, dear viewers. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that's I'm crazy. Just remembering moments. Uh, the only characters who know what they're doing is um, uh, the guy playing Chris knows what he's doing. The guy playing Chief Irons is like the highlight of the movie. Because <laughs> uh, he's, just, he's just playing a shithead and he knows it. Uh, sort of hamming it up chewing the scenery yeah 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 he's like uh do you watch letter kenny uh vaguely i'm aware of them but i don't like know uh okay so he he plays it like the like the hockey coach okay yes um oh and and derry from letter kenny's in the movie he plays brad (laughs) oh so like this is really informed about that i got you yeah yeah (laughs) um yeah, that's just, it's a it's a, a weak note to end this tier list on. But um, it is I guess the is. I guess the notes, the actual notes to end on, because we are I don't know how long we've been, but it feels long. Um, are you okay looking at this? Looking at this right now, how do you feel? I'm gonna zoom out. Yeah, I've had a long time to think about this and make my adjustments. Um, I still would say drop five, five down into F for spice. But I'm fine. No, a D is already spicy. We already got a spicy meatball here. Um, uh, how do you? So if you take my my words as objective fact, how does this spread of quality look to you for a franchise? Um, oh, it, it, if you were correct and in and just like looking at the franchise as a whole, um, I think it would be really interesting. I think what's what's really cool is is if when you look at S through B and even C, you can see such gameplay variation in in yeah. all of this. And there's still like even with all the gameplay variation, there's still a core aspect to it where it's like if you scrubbed out the names, you'd still be like, oh, this is this is a Resident Evil game. Yeah. Um, this is the most gameplay variety I've ever had in one of these, like, retrospectives. And the most spin-offs. 
I usually don't target very spin-off heavy franchises for this reason. But this was um this was a real fun and interesting experience. What cuz uh, cuz I've I have now experienced the Murph thing on only two of these, which is this and Assassin's Creed. What were other franchises you explored before Assassin's Creed? So mostly they were game uh franchises I had played before, but I hadn't maybe played like the most recent entries. Um before God God of War 4 came out, I played through all the God of Wars again, of which I had only played 1 and 2. Okay. Um I play through all the Kingdom Hearts games like maybe before the release of a new game every time. Okay, so Assassin's Creed was the start of this I am doing a new franchise. I'm doing all of the new franchise. Yeah, the fran- this and Assassin's Creed are the first times I went in completely blind. Um yeah, I've also done all the Ratchet and Clanks, uh, all the Sly Coopers, like just sort of playing catch up with games from my childhood, especially once I got uh, access to like PS3 games, which I didn't have growing up. So I like never played any of the Ratchet and Clank like future trilogy. Sure. And stuff like that. So that was all new to me. And then doing like the the weird spin off games they did for the PS2, like Size Matters and Secret Agent Clank. What are you I doing see. there? You're moving things around. Well, I'm just, I'm just, hey, 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 just give me a second. I'm showing the, I am showing the viewer just a, a taste of, of what I would have done. What a bro list would do. Undo. I can't undo. <laughs> okay, so just give me a second, but snapshot before in your brain what Murph did. That was the definitive list. Um, uh, the, uh, that, and then, and then, like, after that, we go into the Bs. I think, I think these, I think this to A is all must play, especially if you're, like, vaguely interested in the franchise. This is, like, play no matter what for me, and then A is, like, oh, if you like these games, you should play all these games. Mm-hmm. That's my opinion. That's, that was my take, and then everything after that, uh, you know, give or take, jump around, you know. Jump, jump, jump around. Okay, I I will try to fix it to the best of my ability. Uh, I've got I've got it here on my screen, so I'll just I'll just save this. <laughs> it was what do do uh do um do t- uh no. Dude, was this right or it was like that right? This is pretty close, right? Uh, you just gotta move remake three above two two after original three. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Then, right. No, no. You move. Remember, we I, I allowed you to move two up into a tier. Oh shit! That was the one win I got. The one win I got. Uh. Outbreak 2 above Dark Side Chronicles. You've got it there after Code Veronica. Okay. And then That's Uh just move Outbreak 2 before Dark Side Chronicles. Under remake 2. There you are. I think yeah. Alright. Uh, right. Now take a snapshot, dear viewer. Are you you played Yakuza at least a little bit of the first one? How are you feeling on it? Um, I have only yeah, I've only played the first three hours of Yakuza one. Are you I'm, excited? I am. I'm intrigued, especially since it offers a more, I guess, a more in depth story than Resident Evil does, and that's like not a knock on Resident Evil. It's just telling a different kind of story. Sure, it's more. You know, I'm, based on keeping a flow chart of who is what in what family and organization yeah. in your head. It's more Game of Thronesy. I got you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very intrigued to see how it goes, but also a little trepidatious because I know Yakuza is very focused on like its side activities and stuff. And I don't really know in a like a marathon like this how many of those side activities i'm going to get to or if i'm going to get like you know fatigued by them we'll see we will see i'm excited 
Thank you everybody for watching. I think this is going to be the first video for the second channel. And thank you for the Daydreamcast. And by the way, we have a podcast for video games in which we talked we extensively do. about these. Yes. Yes. Well, mostly mostly the the later ones cuz I cuz cuz he became a host ones. later on. Yes. But yes. but but also we are on the Twin Geeks network where you could also find out about movies. There is there's podcasts about a bunch of types of movies. Uh there's, the, there's a Smash Bros character ranking. <laughs> Shut up. No. <laughs> If, you, if you're interested in high-class director analysis, the Twin Geeks go over uh, director catalogs. If you're into shit like Godzilla and Kaiju, there's Ranking the Monsters. I would recommend anything from their catalog. Uh, but most importantly, the Daydreamcast. You should, wa you should listen to the Daydreamcast. And I think, I think we're good. We are. We are what it is, gamers. And we end there.